this now we can look who we have in here. Stuart, it's next week when Stuart goes to California. He's just writing her name there. She listens to them to give it. Can she have a copy of the next week's one? Someone wanted to ask. Okay. I'm not going to ask anything about what's on it. Yeah. Oh. That's probably. Fine. Is it the right one? Is it the right one?
Oh, you dropped something. Yeah. Um, that was maybe from Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shake. Yeah. So we don't need. I mean, we don't need that anymore. But. Okay. Just when I ask you, when I ask, when I ask, make sure you, you have something, make sure you wrote it down. I didn't ask. Huh? Yeah. Says whiteboarding in progress. 
What are you talking about? I don't, I don't see that. I don't know. Judge is taking the bench. All right. Thank you. Please be seated. Counsel, please approach. Off the record. We are on the record. This is CL 2020-001818, State of Arizona versus Michael Cherney. Uh, let the record show the presence of counsel. The defendant's not present. The jury's not present. Uh, Mr. Jackson, are you waiving his presence for purposes of addressing a pretrial mo issue? Yes, this uh, limited issue, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I also, just before I forget, one of the jurors had uh, informed my staff that she's having trouble hearing counsel when they're not at a microphone and has asked that everybody please be at a microphone when they're speaking. Um, so I just am passing that along. Uh, go ahead. Your Honor, um, and I don't believe anything was done intentionally, but um, witnesses and people in the gallery were talking in the hall. I was over by the water fountain. I could hear them. I could hear the discussions. The jury was just around the corner by the bathroom. Um, I would like to find out if the jury heard anything and just kind of warn people that when they're on this floor, when they're that, to not talk about anything that they have overheard or seen or stuff like that, something that the jury may hear that they're not supposed to. Okay. All right. I'll ask the jury that when they come in. And then um, the other issue is the state had gave us a clip about five or six minutes of a conversation. Um, the whole conversation is between Lynette and Alyssa, and then the next hour and some after is between Lynette and uh, Mr. Turney. The state is seeking to play about a five minute portion of that tape between Alyssa and Lynette. We're objecting that it's hearsay, um, and, and I don't believe it has any purpose for Anything else? There is some inflammatory comments on that that may be racially charged, and I don't believe it's appropriate for the jury. Uh, who from the state is going to handle this one? Mr. Imbordino, were you planning on doing that with this next witness? Well, yeah, I informed counsel that what I intended to do with this witness, have you listened to Exhibit 91? Do you recognize the voices? Who are the, whose, whose voices do you hear? This is an item that was a copy of an item found during the search warrant. So I would have one of the detectives actually uh, identify where it came from. So you're not going to move for admission or move to publish with this witness? Not today. 
Okay. And then with, uh, were you going to move to admit or publish it with another witness? Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, which witness is that going to be? It would be either Detective Anderson or Detective Summershoe. And when will they be testifying? Wednesday and or Thursday. Okay. So prior to, uh, either of those witnesses being called, I'll be happy to take this up. Mr. Jackson, do you want me to review the exhibit before you argue it to me? Yes, that would be good. Okay. And are there, are there time stamps that you want me to pay attention this, to? This exhibit is the... Let's get you before a microphone. <laughs> I need to speak loud enough. But this exhibit is only the five-minute portion of it. It's the whole thing is five, and a, five minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. Okay. Um, the derogatory comments are at the beginning. I think um, Lynette is talking to Alyssa about why her dad called. She's saying that he's mad that I'm hanging out with this 19-year-old boy. And Lynette says, what, is he black? And so I just, that's... Okay. All right. And the exhibit number is? 91. Exhibit 91. So I will review exhibit 91 prior to Wednesday, and then we can take up this issue once I've done that. Anything else that we can take up before the jury comes in? No. Well, I do believe there were some issues that the state wanted to bring up with this witness about a previous ruling, but I oh, yeah. cannot do that without um, Mr. Attorney. And then there are some other things that were on a list of things that they wanted to play that we're going to object to, but I wanted to bring that up with Mr. Attorney being present. Okay. So we'll wait until he gets there. Five more minutes, Judge. Okay. Water for the witness here, too. I check it.
Alessandro. <laughs> Honor, for the for the record, the things that the state put in their email to us on Friday will not be taken up with this witness, so we don't have any idea what the jury has to say. Okay, so as soon as your client gets here, we can bring the jury in. Yeah, so we great. Can come here, kind of tell them what we did, and then we did this. Great. So I do mean that the court can reconsider it. Do you want to do that before uh, we bring the jury in? Yes. Okay. I don't bring them in yet. What? Hello. We're back on the record in State versus Turney. Let the record show the presence of counsel and the defendant. Mr. Imbordino. Yeah, Judge, like a lot of things, I should have done this at, at the moment. Um, there was an objection to a question I asked this witness attempting to have her describe in more detail the importance of the relationship between her and Alyssa and the things that Alyssa did for her. I don't remember now what the objection was. You sustained it. Um, what I'm asking to do is to allow me to go into that more, most particularly because one of the exhibits today is the original note that was found in the bedroom. And in attempting to have um, Ms. Turney describe why this, the words in this note don't fit the time don't fit um, their relationship as it appears at the time. It's important for me to do that. Um, I could say I apologize for not asking to approach at the time. Well, Mr. Imbordino, at the time the question was asked, I believe the objection was to relevance and the court sustained it. Um, I'm affirming that ruling because at the time I didn't feel that there was any additional relevance. If once the exhibit is admitted, you believe that there are now relevant questions in regard to their relationship, you can certainly ask those questions. If there is a, an objection, I'll consider it in the light of the evidence that exists at the time you're attempting to elicit that. All right. Um, so anything else before we bring the jury in? Not, for, <clears throat> not from the state. All right, Angela, you can bring the jury in.
Please be seated. We are back on the record in State versus Attorney. Let the record show the presence of counsel, the defendant, and the jury. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see you back. Thank you so much for making it back. Let me first apologize. Uh, I have made you wait for over a half hour, and that is something that I hate to do. Um, the truth is my morning was jam packed and I had to run late in order to accommodate all kinds of other things. So I absolutely apologize and please know I will do my best every day to get us started as quickly to our st scheduled start time as I can. Second thing is uh, somebody had indicated to my staff they were having trouble hearing counsel when counsel were not at the microphone. Uh, I've let counsel know uh, to please stay near a microphone. If there is anything that happens that you all cannot hear or see, please make a scene. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that you're hearing and seeing everything that you need to hear and see. Uh, so um, pl please don't hesitate just to wave down me or counsel uh, if that happens. A uh, third thing is... Uh, there are a lot of people out in the hallways, and, uh, and you all are out in the hallways also uh, for a time. Um, I don't know what people are talking about in the hallways. I just want to make sure that nobody violates the admonition and that you all are not exposed to people talking about the case. Um, did anybody hear anything about the case uh, outside the courtroom? All right. Thank you. Let the record reflect that Sarah Turney is back on the witness stand. Uh, Ms. Turney, I'll remind you that you are still under oath. And Mr. Imbordino, you may resume your direct examination of the witness whenever you're ready. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time we would move for the admission of Exhibits 81, 82, 83, 84, and 85. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor, we discussed before as a stipulation. Let's put that microphone near you. We agreed to stipulate to those exhibits. All right. Uh, by stipulation, <laughs> exhibits 81, 82, 83, 84, and 85 are admitted. Uh, Angela, can we go full screen on the uh, Elmo, please? There we go. Sarah, I have uh, a few questions, few questions for you on some photographs. First of all, Exhibit 85. If you can tell the jurors, well, first of all, do you recognize the people in this photograph? Yes. And can you tell us who each of them are? 
please. Yes, uh, to the left is our brother John, then Alyssa, then me, then our brother Mike. And do you have any, um, are you able to give us any estimate of when this photograph would have been taken? Yeah, this was uh, February 2001, just uh, a few months before Alyssa was gone. Were you, I know you're, you've told us uh, and described the uh, younger sister, older sister relationship, but <clears throat> were you familiar with some of her friends? Yes. Uh, what are some of the, what are the names of some of the friends that you knew that Alyssa had? Uh, Katie, Stacy, Charity, Jessica. Um, there were a lot of kids we grew up in the neighborhood with. Shay is one of them. Yeah, she had a lot of friends. Showing you Exhibit 83. Who are we looking at here? That's Katie on the left in the black, Alyssa in the middle, and then Stacy with the blonde hair on the right. And can you give us um, an approximate time frame when this would have been taken? Um, well, unfortunately, Stacy passed, so uh, about two years before Alyssa was gone. And Exhibit 84. That's me and Alyssa. Her brother yeah. James cut off. James over here that you can't quite see him. Yes. Um, what will be the time frame for this photograph? Uh, I'm judging off my hair, to be honest, uh, about a year before Alyssa was gone, maybe less. Exhibit 81. That's, Who are we looking at here? That's Alyssa's boyfriend, John, on the left and Alyssa on the right. And um, what was the occasion? Her junior prom. So the spring of 2001? Yes. You recognize the necklace around her neck? Yes. <clears throat> Do you know how she received that necklace? It was a gift from John, her boyfriend. Exhibit 82 is, I presume, a close-up of Alyssa. Do you know if <clears throat> this is on the same occasion? I believe so, yes. Prior to um, your testimony here this morning, um, did I play for you a recording of a conversation, which is Exhibit 91? Yes. And did you recognize the voices on this recording? Yes. And who were they? My Aunt Lynette and Alyssa. All right, I want to take you back to, quite frankly, I can't recall where we left off, but um, the um, I, I think we were still talking about the day that she went missing. I just want to, do I have it correct? Your answer was that when you got up and went to school that morning, Alyssa was already gone. Yes. So would you have had any way to know what she was wearing? No.
I remember, I believe I remember you telling us that when your father came to pick you up at your friend's house after your day at um, the water park, he asked you to try calling uh, Alyssa. Yes. When, <clears throat> when you got home, I believe you told us that you found her cell phone, correct? Yes. And tell me again where it was located. On her dresser right next to the note. Was it on or off the, the phone? I believe it was on. Okay. Um, do you remember hearing it, it like buzzing or anything? No. You know, like there was a message waiting or somebody trying to call? No, not on the dresser. I just saw it right there when I walked in. All right. And at some point, you got possession of that cell phone, correct? Yes. You began using it. Tell me again when. Um, shortly after she was gone, maybe within a few weeks or days. Did that uh, cell phone have the ability to, for someone to leave a voice message? Yes. And did you need a password to get into the voice messages? I can't recall. If, we, if you did, we had it because I changed the outgoing voicemail shortly after. Did you listen to any voice messages that were already on the phone? Yes. Do you have any recollection of any specific ones? No, it was just friends checking in, seeing where she was at as far as I can remember. Right. We move the admission of exhibit number one. Objection. Exhibit number one is admitted. All right, Sarah, it's, uh, if I need to take it out of this envelope, you just let me know. But you recognize the, uh, this document? Yes. And what is it, please? That's the note that was on her dresser. The note that you found? Yes. Next to the cell phone? Yes. Um, all right, so I think... When we were here Thursday, I asked you if there was any, or I was about to ask you if there was anything about what is in this note that, at least in your opinion, didn't fit with the time. And I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, so let's just talk about the first line. When you dropped me off at school today, did you drop her off at school? No. I mean, she was gone when you got up, right? Correct. And this is addressed to Dad and Sarah, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Sarah, you said you didn't want me around. Look, you got it. I'm not asking you your opinion of what your sister was thinking or meant. What I'm asking you is... Based upon the nature of your relationship with your sister at the time, does that make sense to you? No, there was no big fight or anything before we before she was gone. Okay. Um, I mean, did you want her out of your life forever? No. Why not? Because she took care of me. How did she take care of you? She made sure that um, when I had lice, it was gone, and she got me dressed in the morning when she was there and picked out my clothes and taught me how to do makeup and did my nails and cooked dinner and cleaned my room. Once, uh, I can't remember if I ask you this. Um, it, <clears throat> assume that uh, the defendant, your dad, called the police, made a, a um, report that she was gone. Were, were you a party to that conversation? No. When you got home from 
when you got to the house that day and you found the phone, uh, what did you do the rest of that day? I just went on about my day. I thought she'd be back. Went to sleep that night? Yeah. Got up the next day? Yeah. Now, at that point, school was over for the year, correct? Yes. So that summer, what what kinds of things, I'm going to ask you some of the kinds of things that you did that summer. Uh, before I do that, <clears throat> we've had some testimony about a, a phone call that uh, came in that uh, might have been Alyssa calling. Did you overhear that phone call? No. When when did you first become aware of it? I don't remember. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. And maybe you've already answered that. At some point you became aware that your father was saying that Alyssa had called from California, correct? Yes. Uh, who told you that? I can't remember. I would assume my father. But you just don't know? No, I don't know. And you don't know when, if he did tell you, you don't know when uh, he told you? No. That summer, did you ever make a trip with your father to California? Yes. And how, how many times? At least once is what I remember. Where did you go? Um, we went to the mall and to the beach. And um, did, did he tell you the purpose of the trip? Yeah, he said that he wanted to look for Alyssa. So once you got to Caldwell, well, did you go visit your Aunt Lynette? No. <clears throat> So you went to the beach. Which, what beach? Uh, I couldn't tell you. All right. What did you do at the beach? We just went to the beach. Did you go swimming? Uh, I would assume laying on the sand. I mean, it was just a regular beach trip like we'd done before. And you said a mall? Yes. Do you know which mall? No. In what city? No. And what did you do at the mall? At the mall, uh, we did hand out flyers for a few minutes. Okay. Go anywhere else? No. Is that the only time that you went with him and he said, we're going to go to California to look for Alyssa? Yeah, I believe so. That's the only memory I have. Now, in the, in the years, I, I want to go through the years from May of 2001 until a, a uh, broadcast, a primetime broadcast. So when's the first time you remember that you actually had contact with a police officer or a detective? concerning Alyssa. It was when they uh, took DNA from me and my brother, John. And do you know when that was? I believe maybe 2004 to 2006, somewhere in there. All righty. Many years after she was gone. And where did that take place? Where did they actually take the, the DNA sample? Uh, at some official building, I would assume the police department. Was it in downtown Phoenix? Yes. All right. <clears throat> At some point, were you asked to give a, like a handwriting sample? Yes. And do you recall when that was? No, perhaps around the same time. Your Honor, and I forgot to mention that Detective Anderson is our current case agent. He will be in the here from time to time. Duly noted. 
Do you, do you recognize Detective Anderson? Yes. Can you tell us, uh, not the circumstances, but the approximate time that you first met him? Uh, I think 2007. At some point, did you um, set up a meeting at your house with Detective Anderson and Detective Summershoe? Yes. And when would that have been? Uh, shortly after I became the family contact for Alyssa's case. So. Yeah, so let me ask you about that. Um, when you became the contact person, what do you mean? Um, I was about 17 at a certain point. My dad said he couldn't handle it anymore, so he asked me to be the official person who kept in contact with the Phoenix Police Department regarding the case. All right. And so this meeting that you set up then was sometime after that? Yes. And uh, where was it to take place? Our home. And what was your understanding of the purpose? Uh, they wanted to get uh, what we had left of Alyssa's stuff. Now, I'm going to jump back a little bit. So I think you told us on Thursday that you you moved across the street sometime within the following year after May of 2001, correct? Correct. And so the meeting that you uh, agreed to or set up was going to take place at the home across the street from where Alyssa had lived. Do I have that right? Yes. And <clears throat> after Alyssa went missing, you already told us that you moved into your, to the master bedroom, but were there things of Alyssa's that you wanted to keep? Yes, everything. Like what kinds of things did you want to keep? Her furniture, her clothing, her makeup, her jewelry. I wanted everything. Okay. Why? Because it was her. It was what was left of her. Did <clears throat> did you communicate that desire to the to your father? Yes, I did. So when the police came to the detectives came to the, the house across the street uh, to, to look at at what at Alyssa's things. What was left? Almost nothing. Well, when you say almost nothing, like, what do you mean? There were stuffed animals and a few pieces of her clothing. I kept some of the jewelry, obviously. Uh, I think there was there was a notebook uh, that she had doodled in, a few drawings, but it was like one tote box of things. Did you know that um, the other things that you wanted to keep were now gone? No, I told the police that there was lots of stuff because I thought there was. Now. Were you um, interviewed by ABC for the production of a primetime nationwide broadcast? Yes. I almost forgot. Um, there's been mention of, were you aware that um, a, a See if I have this right. A NASCAR car hood at some point as part of the missing persons network that Alyssa's picture was on the hood? Yes, I went to the race. Okay. Did you did you get the hood? Yeah. And like as a keepsake or memento or something? Yeah, I asked to keep it. And did you keep it? It was gone at one point. But at some point, was it at home? Yes. Okay. Was it there when the police came that day to look at Alyssa's things? No, I don't believe so. The, well, when you say you don't believe so, I mean, 
If you don't know, just say I don't know. Yeah, I can't tell you. It was um, in the garage one day, and then one day it wasn't. I can't. I'm not sure of the date. All right. So, were you interview interviewed as part of the prime time uh, background information? Yes. And <clears throat> was that show broadcast nationwide on a particular day? Yes. Or year? You recall the year? Two thousand nine. Did you watch the broadcast? Yes. I, I need to go back a minute to 2008. Were you present when um, Phoenix Police Department conducted a search of the house across the street? from where Alyssa had been living? No, the police uh, got me down to the station before they did the search. All right. So you were not actually on the property when they were searching? No. Did you become aware that they had searched the property? Yes. As well as the house across the street? Yes. <clears throat> if, if, <clears throat> assume for me, that the, the defendant has said to others that he picked Alyssa up early from school on May 17th. Um, were you aware of that? No. Did your father tell you that in the days or weeks or months after May 17th? No. Can you give me an approximate time of when you found that out? When they were raiding the house, the police told me. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear a word that she said. When they were... When they were raiding the house, the police told me. Thank you. So since you weren't present at the house, are you? do you mean you were informed of that when you were at the police station? Yes, they informed me of many things that day. All right. When you <clears throat> took possession of Alyssa's phone, did you change the number? No. How long did you use that phone? I think perhaps about a year until I uh, I ran up the bill really bad, so we switched to Cricket, which is a, a unlimited plan. Have you on occasion asked your father what happened to Alyssa? Many times. Has he ever given you an answer? He told me he'd tell me on his deathbed. And when did he make that statement? I met up with him at a Starbucks in October of 2017 to meet him face to face and finally get some answers. The um, did you have a savings account at uh, a nearby credit union? Uh, yeah, I believe it was savings and checking. Did you, did you have one in your name at the time that Alyssa went missing? Yes. Did you have any personal knowledge as to whether Alyssa had one as well? Yes. And how did you know that? Because uh, she was excited to get paid from Jack in the Box. Um, now you, I think I asked you this already, you weren't working at the time, correct? Correct. So uh, was there money in your account? 
I'm sorry, Mr. Mordina. I'm not sure what time you're referring to. Sorry. At the time Alyssa went missing, you did not have a job, correct? Correct. Uh, but there was money in your savings account. Yes. And where did it come from? My father. At some point, was money transferred from Alyssa's account to yours? Yes. Do you know when that happened? Shortly after she was gone. How much money? I believe it was all of it. Do you, do you happen to know the amount? It was close to $1,800, I believe. Having watched the, the primetime broadcast, were you aware of the, or did you observe or see the portion of the broadcast where uh, a, what appeared to be a video recording of Alyssa throwing her phone, um, you hear tires screeching in the background. Do you remember seeing that at all? Yes, I believe that was part of the program. Okay. Had you seen it before? Yes. And under what circumstances? My father showed it to me. And do you recall when he showed it to you? Uh, shortly after it happened. Were you present that day when this happened? I can't say for sure. Um, when, when did he show it to you? Like I said, shortly after it happened. Okay. Uh, in relationship to Alyssa's disappearance, when did he show it to you? Before she went missing. Like how long? Uh, perhaps maybe a month. <clears throat> did you also observe the, the video that showed her on the couch with a young man? Yes. Um, do you know who that was? Yeah, his name is Mike Stanley. He worked at Jack in the Box with Alyssa. <laughs> Do you know when that took place? After the video of the fight with her boyfriend. Were you, were you there that day? I can't say for sure. I would assume so. But you don't know. No, I can't say for sure. <clears throat> I have just a moment. You may. A little earlier, I had shown you the, um, I think you said it was the, the uh, photograph taken when Mr. Lackman and Alyssa went to, the, to her junior prom. Um, had you seen them together before? Yes. Uh, at the house? Yes. 
any other places? Um, yeah, we went paintballing together. Okay. Where, where did that take place? Uh, somewhere in the desert. I couldn't tell you. Um, had you ever made trips to the desert before with your dad? Many times. Um, I'm not asking you what kinds of things you would do necessarily. I'm just trying to figure out if you can tell us, um, when you say the desert, <laughs> um, there are obviously places within the city limits that are open uh, areas of desert. Um, can you give us some idea of where? Yeah, it varied. Uh, what I remember is driving up the I-17 and pulling off somewhere. Now, you, you, your father owned a truck, correct? Yes. Um, and after a, sometime after Alyssa went missing, did he acquire a new truck? Yes. Was it the same kind of truck? Yes. You know how long after she went missing that happened? A few months, maybe. The... Um, I'm, go, I'm just about done. I'm going to go back to the to the phone. I know you've told us how you used it, um, that it was Alyssa's. Did you ever communicate with her? Or like, did you ever call her cell phone? Oh, sure, yeah. Now, you didn't have your own, correct? Correct. So you would have had, what, use a landline? Yes. To call? Uh, did you ever witness Alyssa using her cell phone? Yes. I mean, was it common for her to have it in her possession? Oh, yes. That's all the questions I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Imbordino. Um, Cross-examination from the defense. Yes, Your Honor, one second. Good morning. So the last time that you saw Alyssa was May 16, 2001? Yes. And when you got up that, um, that morning, she had already left for school? I would assume so. I don't have a memory of it. But that's typically what happened because she started school at 7.20, correct? That sounds right. And then you started at about 9, 9.30, I think you said? Yes. So there was many mornings that she was already gone before you got up? Yes. So back in 2001, Alyssa was 17? Yes. You were 12? Yes. Did you ever speak with the police back in 2001? No. No police officer requested to speak to you until 2008, correct? No, it was, well, like any contact with police or an official interview? Yeah, to talk to you about what you knew. Nobody had officially came and talked to you about what you knew until 2008, correct? 2008 or 7, yeah, that sounds about right. And you were 19 at the time? That would be about right, yeah. About seven years had passed? Yes. And, and at that point is when you became the family contact for police and victims advocates and stuff like that, correct? Yes. And then prior to you, John actually did it for a brief period, correct? Yes. But it was too much for him. He didn't want, he didn't want to be the family contact? I can't remember. But at some point, it went from your dad to John to you. My dad to John, back to my dad, then to me. Okay. And then in that time, 2000, 2008, 2007, 2008, your dad was starting to get sick? I'm not Stressed sure. about the situation? I think you believe you told Detective Anderson? Yes, very stressed, absolutely. Okay. You had told Detective Anderson that Alyssa's runaway and disappearance consumed him? Yes. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about your relationship with Alyssa. Um, you testified on Thursday that you guys had a sibling rivalry. Yeah, sure. Just little fights. Nothing I wouldn't look back on and laugh now, yeah. So for the most part, things were good? Yeah, I mean, we fought back and forth, but in general, sure. You guys fought a lot, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. 
In fact, you told Detective Anderson in the first interview in September that you guys fought all the time. Yes. You guys were mean to each other. Yes. She would call you fat. Yes. You would call her stupid. Yes. She would get violent with you. I wouldn't call it violence. It's the word you used to Detective Anderson. She would push you up against the wall. I was under a different mindset, unfortunately, at that time. So she didn't push you up against the wall? No, she did. And I pushed her against the wall, certainly. You guys were jealous of each other? Yes. You told Detective Anderson you were jealous of the attention that Alyssa got? Yes. And Alyssa was jealous that you were left alone? Yes. But back when you were 12, you were not getting any tr in any trouble, were you? I certainly was, yes. You were when you were 12? Yes. You were the sensible one. That's what you told Detective Anderson. Yes, that's what I was told, yeah. That's what you were told? By my father, yes. So, so you lied to Detective Anderson? No. Okay. You said that Alyssa was unpredictable. Yeah, I believed that at the time, yes. You told her she had a temper? She did, yes. She made poor choices? That's what I believed. That's what you told the detective, correct? Yes. She was a partier? That's, That's what, what you told the detective, correct? That's what I told the detective, yes. She liked to go out? Yes. She was smoking marijuana? Yes. She would get drunk? Maybe once or twice, yes. She was going out when she wasn't supposed to? Yes. Alyssa never had a driver's license, did she? No. But she would drive the vehicle, correct? Once or twice, maybe. Not Drove you to get ice cream, correct? You told Detective Anderson that? Yes, she did. So she was doing things that she wasn't supposed to? That was with our father's permission. Okay. But the reason she didn't have a driver's license is because she failed a driving test, correct? No. She was scared. My, my objection, Your Honor, it, to this last question is no foundation for her knowledge. Um, she just answered that the reason she well, didn't I'll, fail the I'll, test. You can, you can address it on redirect. I'll overrule the objection. Now, you told Detective Anderson that she failed her driver's test, correct? Uh, if that's what I said, then, yeah, I just don't have any knowledge of that now or memory. Would, would listening to that interview help refresh your recollection? I'm sure it would. Runaway approach? You may. And for the record, I'm going to play a portion of Exhibit 86. Mr. Jackson, just in the interest of time, since we're a little bit close, you want to maybe have her listen to it over lunch and come back to it after lunch? We could do that. But she did still take the car out of se several times? Um, she drove the car, correct? On occasion, with our father's permission, yes. Without a driver's license? Yes. You would agree that Alyssa had behavioral issues? When I spoke to Detective Anderson, yes. Okay. And you told Detective Anderson that she got more attention because she needed it, correct? That's what I told him, yes. Alyssa's behavior was a topic of great stress in your home back in 2000, 2001, correct? Yes. Particularly between your dad and Alyssa? Yes. She was a handful, I think, was the term that you used when describing her to Detective Anderson. Do you remember saying that? I don't remember, but if you say so. Given the things that you told Detective Anderson, that she had a temper, she was a partier, she was going out, would it make sense that you believe that she would be a handful given those things? Yes, I was under that impression. You were aware that Alyssa was diagnosed with ADD? No. No? 
But you did tell Detective Anderson she was diagnosed with ADD. Because that's what I was told. Okay. And you said it showed up mostly in her short-term memory. Do you remember telling him that? I don't remember telling him that, but if that's what I said, that's what I believed at that time, yes. I'll go back and play that one for her too, Your Honor. When you talked with Alyssa, you said that you would not know that she had any issues, correct? Yeah. But she would have problems with comprehension and recall of memory, correct? That's what I was told. That's what you told Detective Anderson? Because that's what I was told. In any of those interviews with Detective Anderson, did you say, this is what my dad said? Yes or no? I was brainwashed to believe a certain thing about my sister from my father. Okay. So these observations that you saw, they were all made up? No, I made many statements about Alyssa having a better memory than I did. Your dad would help her with her homework, correct? Yes. This was a nightly routine? Yeah. Maybe not every night, but was a regular thing? Yeah. In fact, you would actually do some of her homework too, correct? We would swap. Your dad and Alyssa would work in the living room when they did the homework, correct? Sometimes. And it's actually, I believe you told Detective Anderson, that's when they got along best, when he was helping her. Yeah. So was that all made up too, or is something your dad brainwashed you? I haven't made anything up, sir. She had an IEP in school, didn't she? Objection, foundation. Uh, overruled, the witness may answer if she knows. I believe so. Yes. And the IEP was something that your dad fought for. Objection, foundation. Overruled, the witness may answer if she knows. I'm not sure. You were aware that he sued Deer Valley School District, correct? Yes. Alyssa didn't have the best grades, did she? No, I think she had pretty decent grades. Ds, Cs, a few Bs? Yeah, I think it was like As, Bs, and Cs. She wasn't allowed to get Fs. She got Ds, though, correct? I'm not sure. She didn't like school, did she? No, she liked attending school. You told Detective Anderson that she didn't like school. I would have to assume I meant her school work. And she did poorly in school? No. She ditched classes? Not that I was aware of, I don't think. You told Detective Anderson about a time that she ditched classes and you had her call you out also? Oh, yes, many years before she went missing, yes. When you were asked to describe Alyssa on Thursday, you stated that she was happy mostly, correct? Yeah. She was friendly? Yeah. Everyone liked her? I think so. But when you told Detective Anderson that Alyssa was big-eyed and was taken in the world, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You told Detective Anderson that Alyssa was big-eyed and was taking in the world. Do you remember that? No, but if you say so. You said that she had an experimental attitude. If you say so, sir. Well, Detective Anderson asked you if she had an experimental attitude, and you said yes. And then he even asked you for an example. Do you remember that? No. And he said that if someone offered her something and told her it would make her feel good, she'd probably take it. Do you remember saying that? I'm sure that's what I believed. You told Detective Anderson she was bordering on being dangerously socially naive, correct? If it's in that report, sir, then that's what I said. Well, I'm asking you, did you say that? I have almost no memory of that meeting from 15 years ago. It's convenient the things that you remember and don't. Objection, argumentative. Sustained. You gave an example when she was with friends that she would get into cars with strangers to go to parties even though her friends didn't want to. Is that something that you told Detective Anderson? That's what I was told, yes. You said that Alyssa was trusting to a fault. I would consider her extremely trusting, yes. You said that she had difficulty foreseeing the consequences of her actions. Yes, I'm sure. You told Detective Anderson that she would give her phone number and addresses to strangers. That's what I was told. That's what you told Detective Anderson, correct? Yes. You said that Alyssa wasn't much of a planner. That sounds correct. 
She didn't talk about her future. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she knew what she wanted to do quite yet. She was impulsive? At times. And she talked about leaving often, didn't she? No. You told Detective Anderson that she talked about leaving often. Yeah, that's probably how I felt at the time. Now I want to ask you about the day that Alyssa ran away. Uh, she had left, again, she had left school before you had gotten up? Yes. And at some point your dad picked you up from your friend's house? Yes. You originally told police that you believed that that was around 3 p.m. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now, there's some discrepancy on when you got out. You said, think now maybe that you got out of school at 3.30? I think the school generally ended at 3.30, so that would be my assumption. Okay. And that your dad picked you up at some point after that. You had to walk there, and at some point he got there, correct? Yeah, shortly after. But you're not sure about the exact time? No. And you testified that when your dad picked you up, he was trying to get a hold of Alyssa. Yes. She wasn't answering her phone. Yes. So he had repeatedly called her. That's what he told me. That was something that you got, your dad did when you didn't pick up. He would call over and over and over, correct? I didn't have a phone, so I'm not sure. Well, sometimes you would borrow his cell phone, correct? Yeah. And if you didn't answer, he would call over and over. That's what you told Detective Anderson, correct? That sounds like what he would do. And he would just keep calling until you finally picked up? I would assume so. So when you guys got home, he was calling out for Alyssa, correct? I don't remember that. You guys went to Alyssa's room? I remember I went into Alyssa's room. Okay. You told Detective Anderson that you guys went into her room, correct? Yeah, I just remember going in first. Okay. And her room was normally pretty clean? Yes. Things had a place? Yeah. But when you got home, there were contents from her backpack all over the floor? Uh, just in that front, like, the doorway, I guess you could say. Like, a few feet within her room, yeah. Looked like something had been dumped out. Yeah, it looked like her backpack had been dumped out. That was my assumption. Were there drawers open? No. Everything else seemed to be in its place? Yes. Bed wasn't moved? No. Dresser wasn't out of place? No. No signs of a struggle? Didn't smell like any cleaning supplies had been recently used? Not that I recall. Didn't notice any blood in her room? No. Blood in the living room? No. Anything in out of place in the living room? Not that I recall. Any blood in the kitchen? No. Anything out of place in the kitchen? Not that I recall. Any blood in the bathroom? No. Anything out of place in the bathroom? Not that I recall. Any blood in your room? No. Any blood in your dad's room? No. Anything out of place in your room? Not that I recall. Anything out of place in your dad's room? I, I'm not sure I went in there. Not that I recall. Okay. You drove home in your dad's truck, correct? Yes. That was the GMC Sierra, I think you said it was? White? It was a white truck. Now, you talked about on cross-examination about your dad acquiring a new truck, correct? You mean direct examination? Direct examination, sorry. About your dad acquiring a new truck some point after, after Alyssa had gone missing. Yes. And do you remember talking to Detective Anderson saying the reason you did that, he did that was because it was to tow quads. We got a bigger truck. I don't recall. You don't remember saying that? Don't. I think this is a good time to stop, Your Honor, given All right. the amount of impeachment I have with it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our noon recess. I'll ask you to be back in the jury room, not later than 1.30. Uh, please remember the admonition. You may leave everything in the courtroom if you'd like. Jury is now excused.
Smith for his testimony. Please be seated. Let the record show the presence of counsel and the defendant. Jury is not present. Anything for the record from the state? No, sir. Anything for the record from the defense? Not a defendant. All right. We'll see you at 1.30, and we are adjourned.
It's going to be like a, like a little pencil on the end. Yeah, I don't actually need to have her do anything with it. There was one. Yeah. I had to steal the pen from someone else. Huh? I lost some pens somewhere between leaving here and coming back to here. <laughs> I have other pens. No, I have a bunch. I just was looking for particular yeah, things. Ooh, these are nice pens. They're not on the PD budget. <laughs> yeah. There's a quick matter we can take up before the defendant All right. Uh, we're back on the record in State versus Turney. Let the record show the presence of counsel. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you waiving your client's presence for yes, purposes, for purposes. of ad addressing this issue. Go ahead. Your Honor, um, during the lunch break, we had played some clips for um, Sarah Turney. Um, it is my contention based on her testimony that her father brainwashed her, that she was told these things, that the jury be able to see these clips to show her demeanor while she was making these statements to Detective Anderson. So I was going to show um, three clips. One of them is 15 seconds long. One is about a minute, and the other is about 35 seconds. The state says they object, so I thought we would have that discussion with you. I do, I do believe it goes to her. I do believe it goes to her testimony. Well, the proper way is to is to um, call is to ask first of all, play it for the witness. It either refreshes her recollection or it doesn't. If it doesn't refresh her recollection, then it's hearsay. I mean, in other words, if it refreshes a recollection, then she can say, yeah, I remember saying that. <laughs> if she has no memory of saying it, it's hearsay. So you're moving to admit portions of the interview. 
not admit, just play them in court as demonstrative. There's, there's nothing saying that it's hearsay. She, she's agreeing that she made those statements. We're not asking for questions. She has made statements to this jury that her father brainwashed her. I, I get it. I get it. Let the record reflect the defendant is now present. Well, if the jury is seeing it, then it's got to be admitted. So you're moving to admit portions of the interview. Yes. And you believe it's admissible because? It is, it is impeachment evidence to show that she wasn't brainwashed. Her demeanor while she testifies is allowed all the time in, in courts where people are saying something and saying that something else happened. Here, she is saying that none of this is true. I just said it to the police because I was brainwashed. The jury should be able to get to see her demeanor while she was talking to Detective Anderson. Well, I've considered the rules. I think probably the closest rule that applies is Rule 613, uh, which contains, which pertains to uh, prior statements of witnesses. Extrinsic evidence of a prior inconsistent statement uh, is admissible only if the witness is given an opportunity to explain or deny the statement and an adverse party is given an opportunity to examine the witness about it if justice so requires. So I think it's premature to offer the videos yet. She's still being examined. So I'm going to deny the request at this time. You may renew the request after she's had a full opportunity to uh, explain or deny her statements now that she's been given an opportunity to see the video. So the request for admission at this time is denied. Anything else before we bring the jury in? No, you're on. All right, Angela, you can bring the jury in. And Ms. Turney may resume the witness stand. I thought I saw her somewhere in here.
Please be seated. Let the record, uh, we're back on the record in State versus Turney. Let the record reflect the presence of counsel, the defendant, and the jury. Uh, Sarah Turney is back on the witness stand. And Mr. Jackson, whenever you're ready, you may resume your cross-examination of the witness. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Going back to before lunch, I had asked you um, a few questions about a couple things, and you didn't remember those things or didn't remember saying them to the detective, so I had you listen to them during lunch. Do you remember that? Yes. And I had you listen to about three or four clips? Yes. And then maybe another one that we may talk about here in a little bit? Okay, yes. Do you remember that? Yes. And in one of those clips was in regards to whether... Um, Alyssa had ever talked about going to run away. Do you, do you remember listening to that clip? Yes. And on direct, you said that no, she hadn't ever planned on doing that, correct? Yes. But you read, you listened to that clip, correct? Yes. And in that clip that was played, you were asked by the detective and by Detective Anderson if she had ever thought about running away, correct? Yes, I believe that's what he said. And you said all the time. Yes. And you said that her and your father fought all the time. She wanted to get emancipated. She, was, she wanted to run away. Yes. And then he asked you about when these things happened and why they happened. And it was because of being caught with drugs, do, getting in trouble, stuff like that, correct? Yes. In another clip, you were shown, you were asked about her being experimental. Do you remember listening to that clip? Yes. And you gave... In that clip, you gave an example, and you listened to that one, correct? Yes. And you gave that example about her getting into car with, with people that she didn't know. And yes, that her a, friend, a story I had heard. Yes, from her friends. That's what you said. It was from her friends. I said she was with her friends. And you said that you and her, right before that clip, you said that her, you and her friends would talk, and this is something that you learned. It wasn't from her friends, no, sir. But in that clip, you said you would talk to her friends, and then you start talking about that, correct? Objection. This is hearsay. Well, uh, I, I'm a little unclear as to what the question is. Why don't you re-ask the question? The question was, did you say that she got into the car with other people? And, and there's Told no, Detective Anderson that, correct? My objection is there's no foundation. Uh, overruled, the witness may answer if she knows. Yeah, it was not something I personally observed. I asked you, did you tell that to Detective Anderson? Can you Objection, it's not relevant. It, it's not personal knowledge. Uh, overall, the witness may answer. Did you tell Detective Anderson in that clip that we listened to that she was experimental? Yes. Remember saying that? Yes. And that one of the examples you gave was that she got into cars of boys to go to a party that she didn't know. Yes. That is what you said, correct? Yes, sir. Another question that I asked you uh, before break was in regards to her ADD and her short-term memory. Do you remember me asking you about that? Yes. And do you remember um, reviewing the clip over lunch? Yes. And in that clip, you told the detective that her ADD came out in short-term memory loss, correct? Yes. And that you wouldn't know it by talking to her, that she had issues, but it showed up in her test scores and her short-term memory. Yes. All right. Now, I want to go right before lunch, we were talking about I asked you about the truck. I asked you if there any blood, anything like that in the house, anything like that. And we kind of got to a point where we stopped. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about Alyssa. She could be pretty aggressive. Yes. That's what you told the detective. She was aggressive. Yes. She could be feisty. Absolutely. She let people know how she felt. Yes. She was pretty strong. Yes. She could hold her own. Yes. On May 17th, when your dad picked you up um, from Peanuts, I think, is your friend that you called her. Is that her nickname? Peanut and Melody. They were sisters. Correct. And 
did you ever notice any marks on your dad? No. Any scratches, bruises, black eyes? No. Now, at some point, you found a note, correct? Yes. And the county attorney had went through that note with you, correct? Yes. Something else that you noted, I think, when you were talking to the detectives was that You said that it was odd that her, you told the detective that it was odd that her first letter was capitalized in the A. Do you remember telling him that? Yes. You said that she never did that, correct? Yes. show you some letters and you can tell me if you recognize any of the writing or anything like that I don't want you to tell me what's on them we're not going to talk about the letters themselves we're just going to ask you to look at the signature line at the bottom and see if you recognize it okay are you familiar with a friend, and I think you talked about it, by the name of Charity Robinson. Yes. That is someone that your sister met while at Barry Goldwater? I believe that's correct. And that's, your sister went there her freshman and sophomore year? No, I think just her sophomore year. Just her sophomore year? I believe. May I approach you, sir? You may. Handing you what's been marked as Exhibit 42. You can flip through those pages and yeah. it's not 42 92. 92 sorry I didn't have my glasses on I'm sure you looked probably approximately at least 10 letters, correct? And you reviewed them? Yes. And all of these, is it a capital A like this one? It is. When you saw the note, you immediately recognized it as her handwriting? Yes. In the note, she referenced taking some money, correct? In the note I'm seeing here, sir? Yes. Yes. And your dad was known to have cash in his house? Yes, some. Now, there's been a little bit of discussion about finding the note and finding the cell phone. I believe you said that you found the cell phone next to um, the note, correct? Yes. Now, do you remember as soon as your dad saw the note, he called Alyssa's cell phone? No, I don't recall that. And you guys heard the phone ring? No, the note was right next to the phone. I'm going to play you another clip. May I approach, Runner? You may.
Um, he's still talking about it a little bit. Did that help refresh your recollection of that conversation you had with Detective Anderson? Yes, thank you. So in that conversation with Detective Anderson, which was back in September of 2008, you told him that you heard the phone ring, right? I heard it, you said. Yes. Correct? And you said, you told him that obviously she wasn't there and he called her and we heard it, correct? Yes. And you saw the fear in your dad's eyes, his concern for Alyssa? Yes. And he immediately started calling Alyssa's friends. He called her boyfriend? I believe so, yeah. He called family members? Yes. And at some point he called everyone in her phone? Yeah. All her friends? Yes. He went to Jack in the Box? That's what I was told. And finally, he did call police to report her missing later that night, correct? Yes. And his attempts to find Alyssa didn't stop that night, did they? I suppose not, no. For weeks after she ran away, he would continue to call her friends? I wasn't there for that. Coworkers, family members? Certainly family. He put up flyers? Yes. He was even he was even contacted by Phoenix police because some of the flyers you guys had put up they asked you to take down, correct? That's what he had told me, yes. That's what you told Detective Anderson, correct? If yes, if it was in that interview, then that's what I told him. But in that interview with Detective Anderson, you didn't tell him that your dad told you this, did you? No. And as time passed, his concern grew that something had happened to Alyssa. I would say he had that concern that very night. Okay. He was annoyed and frustrated by the way the Phoenix Police Department was handling the case? That's what he said. You didn't see him being annoyed and frustrated? He was generally annoyed and frustrated. You were aware that he called detectives to get them to investigate? Not that I can... No, not that I can recall. Were you aware he wrote letters to the police chief? After the fact, yes. He wrote letters to congressmen. I believe that's what happened. I've never seen them. Contacted the FBI? I believe so. I wasn't witness to these things. But you did tell Detective Anderson and other people, and I believe in your podcast too, that Alyssa's runaway and subsequent disappearance consumed your dad's life for years. Yeah, that's what it appeared. You told Detective Anderson that he spent large amounts of money in an effort to find her? Because that's what I believed, yes. He took trips to California? You talked about that on direct, correct? At least one. And you, he did this over the months after her disappearance? I believe so. And he took you on one or two of those trips, you said? One for sure, maybe another one? Yeah, I can't remember if it was two for sure, but I do remember at least one. There's some pictures. And you testified on direct that you guys went to the mall, you went to the beach, you did hand out some flyers at the mall? Yes. But he also took you to the payphone that the alleged call from Alyssa came, correct? I don't remember that. You don't remember telling Detective Anderson that he took you to that payphone and he took pictures of the payphone and the surrounding stores? I remember pictures of the payphone, so I have to assume that that's what happened. I just don't have a recollection of it. You don't have a recollection now of telling Detective Anderson that he took you there? I don't remember half that interview, to be honest, but if that's what I said, then that's what happened. You told Detective Anderson in subsequent interviews that he drove around in areas where he believed girls had been trafficked to try to find her. That's what he told me, yes. You also told... Detective Anderson, that while you were in California with him, you 
were in an area that you believed was your Aunt Lynette's house, and he was staking out that area to see if they were hiding her. Oh, okay, then yes. Do you remember saying that to Detective? No, but I believe that was what I believed. But you told Detective Anderson that that happened while you were on the trip to California with him. Yes, I was alone in a hotel room for much of that trip. However, he um, would say that some things he had to do was dangerous and that I could not come with. But if you told Detective Anderson that you were there in this area, which you thought was weird because you were just hanging out outside some house staking it out, that wouldn't be you in the hotel, correct? No, correct. If that's what I said, then I'm sure that's what happened. Now, there's been talk about your dad recording conversations. Yes. This has done for years, correct? Yes, my whole life. Done before you were born even, correct? Yes. He probably did this before Alyssa was born. Yeah, I believe there are tapes dating back to the 70s. Okay. He was pretty paranoid? Yes. Now, I want to ask you about the recording system in the house. You did have a few conversation questions asked you um, about this system. Um, this was on the home phone in the kitchen area, correct? Yes. And the line from the wall would connect to the box or the recording system, correct? I would assume so. I don't know exactly. How there was... I'd never, like, set it up myself. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever look at it, though? You've seen it. Oh, sure. Yeah, it was there. And it, and it required tapes to be inside for it to record? Yes. And it would only record that particular phone, right? Yes. And there'd be times that conversations would be happening and the call would end, correct? The recording would end because the tape ended, correct? Yes. And then to be able to reset it, you'd have to put a new tape in and re-push to record. It wouldn't automatically do that, correct? Correct. The phone in the kitchen wasn't the only phone in the house, was it? Um, Your dad had a landline, same line, but a phone in his bedroom, correct? He had a cell phone. But he also had another receiver in his in his bedroom, correct? Not, I mean, like on the wall, but I don't remember a phone. It, it's possible, but I don't remember. But if that phone was there and didn't have a recording system, if that phone was answered, it wouldn't record, correct? It only recorded when you picked up that specific receiver in the, in the kitchen. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember him having a phone in his room. But you did know that the only way that that recording happened is when you picked up that particular receiver in the kitchen, correct? I'm, I'm not sure. I just know when you picked up the home phone, it recorded. Now, you're aware that there was a camera system in the house, correct? Yes. There was one in the, the carport looking out to the street? Looking at the front door, or the door we used to get in the home. And out towards the street, correct? It was placed in the back corner to see the door entering there, and you could also see under the garage a little bit. I, I can't quite recall. I don't think I've seen any video of it, which helps my memory. Okay. And the other was an event in the living room. Yes that covered the couch and that Arcadia door in the house? Um, I don't quite remember if it covered the Arcadia door, but for sure the couch. Okay. Now, you talked about that video recording system on direct, correct? Yes. And you said that your dad told you that Sarah was not to know about the camera in the vent. Do you uh, remember saying that? Alyssa was not to know sure. about the camera in the vent, yes. I was told not to tell her. Okay. Thursday was the first time you ever made that statement to anyone, correct? No. You never told Detective Anderson that in an interview? I'm sure I have, and I've certainly said it on many, many podcasts over the years. You never said it to De Detective Anderson. You never said it to Detective Summershoe. I would have to recall. We had so many communications over the years, it's extremely difficult to tell. Did you ever tell the county attorneys? Possibly. But you knew that Alyssa knew the camera was there, don't you? Eventually, yeah. She did find out. She knew it was there for years. The camera in the vent? Yes. It was not there for years, no, sir. Now, the system, 
had two cameras, correct? The one in the vent and the one in the carport, correct? That is what I remember, yes. And that system was held in your dad's room, correct? It was on like, looked like a VCR or something like that, box, right? Yes. And it was connected to a TV, a screen. Yeah, it was like a TV and a VCR is what I remember. Yeah, so it ran constantly. The, the, the live feed was there. Yes. It didn't always record though. Correct. But if you went in there and looked at the screen, you could see the two cameras. No, so there were different settings where it was either one camera, the other, or it could cycle, I believe. But it would have both, correct? You could, you, you could look at the system and see both cameras. Not like on, on one, one screen. screen? No, it was either one camera, the other, or it cycled between them. Yeah, so the cycle would show both cameras at the same time, correct? If it was set to the cycle, yeah. And you guys were able to go into your dad's room and look at those cameras, look at the monitor. I'm sure we had the opportunity, but we didn't, we weren't really supposed to go in there. Well, in your interview with Detective Anderson, you said that if you guys heard a noise or if you heard something, you would go in there and monitor the, the system to see what the camera were showing, correct? Yeah, if you say I said so, sure. Well, do you, do you believe you said that? Do you believe that ever happened? I believe I went into his room, absolutely. And you knew that she could see it because there was a blinking red light, correct? No, it was covered. So if all her friends said they saw a, a, a blinking red light, what, you, you believe that's not true? I can't attest to what her friends said. I know that he often covered it with electrical tape on most of his cameras. Now... Again, your testimony is that this camera in the living room was set to, in the vent to spy on Alyssa. But in your interviews with Detective Anderson, you told them that the cameras were put up because someone tried to break into your house while your sister and you were home. That's what I was told, yes. Again, that's not what you didn't say. This is what I was told. You told De Detective Anderson that the cameras were installed because someone tried to break into the house while me and my sister were there, correct? Yes, that's what I believed at the time. That is what you told. I'm not asking you what you believed. That is what you told Detective Anderson. You didn't tell him I believe, all that. That's all now. This is all 20 years later you're saying believe. Back then you told him this is what happened, correct? Yes. Now, going to that recording function, you talked about, again, we talked about how the feed would just be live, where you could monitor it, but it doesn't always record, correct? Yes. And to be able to record it, you actually had to go in and press record on the tape, correct? Yes. So it wasn't recording constantly? There had to be a tape in it, but it was recording frequently from what I remember. But again, you would have to push record to be able to do it. Yes. And he would do it typically. When would your dad turn it on? Um, I believe it was recording at most times. You told Detective Anderson that it wasn't always recording and that typically he would turn it on if he heard a noise or if he left or if he felt like recording it because he was nosy. Yes. You knew how to start the recorder, correct? Yeah. Alyssa knew how to start it? I'm not sure. Okay. And it would record onto VHS tapes? Yes. Now, you talked a little bit about podcast. You, you, a statement that your dad had made about coming to his deathbed. Do you remember making that statement? Yes. On direct. Yes. You didn't tell the jury the complete statement, did you? I mean, we can play it if you'd like. Well, he, he said other things about recording, about that confession, correct? That you call mm -hmm. a confession, correct? He also said that he would confess if the state gave him lethal injection within 10 days. And he also denied 50 times to you over the years that he's not going to confess to something he didn't do, correct? 
It's varied throughout the years. Something he says he doesn't remember doing is something but he told me. You said, you just specified it there, that he would get the lethal injection. He actually said, if that quote is correct, he actually said, if this is what you want me to do, if it makes you feel happy, correct? Is it going to make you feel better? That's what he said, correct? No, I don't believe it was phrased like that. Okay. And then he told you that I didn't do anything and I'm not going to confess to anything that I didn't do, correct? Yes. And the reason you went there that day was to try to get a confession from him, correct? There were many reasons I went there that day. Detective was... Anderson and Detective Summershoe said that the case wasn't moving and they would need a confession for something to happen, correct? No, not in those exact words. I believe they also wanted her body. But they told you you couldn't go anywhere without a confession. I don't recall that specific phrasing. So you attempted to get a confession, correct? I attempted to get answers, absolutely. And he repeatedly told you that the answer is going to be the same. Even if you come to my deathbed, I did not kill your sister. And he was adamant over and over. And he was offended that you believed he did something, correct? That was part of that conversation also, right? No. He never told you, I can't believe my own daughter thinks I could do something this heinous? At the very end, yes. After he taunted me. But he said that in the conversation in context of this alleged, what you call a confession. Yes, at the very end. And he repeatedly told you he cannot confess to something he didn't do. Objection, ask me. Sustained. Now, when you went to that Starbucks, did you tell him you were recording? No. Now, I want to ask you a few questions about um, Alyssa's boyfriend, John Lackman. You were aware she was dating him? Yes. He had come over to the house a few times? Yes. On a number of occasions? Yeah. You thought they had a, I don't know, how would you describe their relationship? Yeah, good, normal. Did, he, did she ever cheat on him? It's hard. To, I don't know if they were together. I don't know what happened between that fight and when she was with Mike Stanley on the couch. So, but I would assume, I guess so, yeah. It's within like, a few weeks of her going missing, she was on the couch with another man, correct? Yes, but I don't know if they had broken up because of the, the fight. And he was a 20-year-old who was weeks away from turning 21, correct? I, I wouldn't know that. And your sister was 17 at the time, correct? She was 17. Um, counsel, when you say he was 20, we've talked about two he's in the last question. I, do, I agree. I will go back. When I'm talking about Mike Stanley, the individual who works at Jack in the Box, correct? Who was on the couch with Alyssa, was not the boyfriend, correct? I, I don't know their relationship status. Okay. John Lackman was the one that she was dating, the one we've seen the video they're fighting, correct? He is the sa around the same age as Alyssa? Yeah, I think they were the same grade. Mike Stanley was the older gentleman who worked at Jack in the Box, correct? Yes. How would you say that John treated Alyssa? From what I saw, it was normal. I don't know. I know that they got in that one fight um, where there was, and what's hard is because I didn't see it. But from what I saw, things seemed normal. Okay. Do you remember telling Detective Anderson that you thought that John treated Alyssa bad? That sounds right. He was a jerk to her. I don't know if I use that exact word. He would talk down to Alyssa. That's what I believed. You told the Detective Anderson that he was violent with her. I was told that he smashed her finger in a car door. Hmm. I did not witness that. But you actually did witness, because you told Detective Anderson that you saw him violently grab her. Do you remember saying that? No. And you told Detective Anderson that she pulled away and that your boyfriend had never pulled you that way, and she was embarrassed. Do you remember saying that? My boyfriend at, when I was 12? Well, you're doing the interview in 2008, and you're referencing back to 2001 when John Lackman violently grabbed, you're describing a violent interaction between Alyssa and John. I would need my memory refreshed. I don't remember. May I approach, Your Honor? You may.
It's just going to take a second to pull out my computer. Decided to go to sleep. Finish talking about that. Just look up. Let me know if that helps with anything. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm not sure this is the clip you meant to play. Oh, okay, they're just getting to it, I think. I mean, if I take a quick break, I just, for some reason, something not it didn't, properly. So. Yeah, I didn't talk about what you were talking about. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a brief recess. I'll ask you to be back in the jury room in about five minutes. Please remember the admonition. You can leave everything in the courtroom. Jury's now excused. Please be seated.
May I use the restroom? You should ask the judge for that. Judge, may I use the restroom? Sure. It's a different one than she put the wrong one on there. So I need to get that. It's on here. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Actually, do you think it can be found there? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not coming through all the way. So I think we're going to have to put it. See if you have it. See if we can get it to play on yours and mine. Because it's showing right here. It's showing 540. I would, I would see where that is. Unless it's the 129 one and I just fucked that up. It's not that one. That one I can guarantee is not. Yeah, that would try that one to see if it plays better for you. Let me see this. Exactly where it was. I believe it's
Please be seated. We are back on the record in State versus Turney. Let the record show the presence of counsel, the defendant, and the jury. Mr. Jackson, you may resume your cross-examination of the witness whenever you're ready. Thank you. Right before the break there, we had some, I had some issues with the recording. I was able to play you during the break um, the recording that I was asking you about. Did that help refresh your recollection? Yes, thank you. And that was in an interview or a conversation, recorded conversation you had with Detective Anderson in January of 2009. Um, and you told Detective Anderson that he was violent with her, correct? I believe it was Summer Shoe, but yes. Summer Shoe, okay. And you told him that he was violent with her? Yes. He would grab her violently? Yeah, by the wrist, I believe is what I said. And she pulled away? Yes. She looked embarrassed? Yes. You were concerned because she had bruises at some point. Yes, she did have bruises. And one time was on her cheek, another on her body somewhere. I believe it was the, the hand incident I was referring to earlier. And then yes, in that recording, I said that she had a bruise on her face. And that concerned you? Of course. So that's a little bit different than when you told us that everything seemed fine, correct? Yeah, I did not remember that. Now, I want to ask you another question that you were asked in the December 11th, 2008 interview. Um, you were aware that Alyssa had threatened to call CPS on your dad if he didn't allow her to do certain things, correct? I was aware that she had threatened to call CPS, or I was told that. You told Detective Anderson that you had overheard those things. I'd overheard conversations, yeah. Okay. You knew that she wanted to get tattoos? Yeah. Tongue piercings? Yes. She thought you and your dad were boring? I believe she'd said that before, yeah. And your dad wouldn't let her get tongue piercings or tattoos until she turned 18, correct? Now, I want to ask you a question um, about a pretrial interview. Were you asked to do a pretrial interview in this case? Uh, with the state? With the defense. We requested to do an interview with Oh, you. yes. And you turned us down, correct? Correct. Now, I have one more question. I believe you testified on direct about some jewelry that Alyssa had um, that was your mother's. Yes. A set of jewelry, correct? There were a few pieces, yeah. Do, do you remember that question you were asked? Yeah. And you said that, I believe, I want to say that you said it was odd that she left that behind. Yeah. You know, because that was something from your mother, correct? Yes. It was odd to you. You believe she would have taken that. Yeah. But in 2008, you were asked about, by Detective Anderson, about anything she might have left behind, if she had any heirlooms or anything she cherished. Do you remember Detective Anderson asking you that question? I not remember, but if you say so, I believe so. And you told Detective Anderson that she had a set of your mother's jewelry, but unfortunately it was stolen by your cousin David, who had come and lived with you guys, and it was stolen a couple years before she left. Do you remember telling him that? If I said that, then sure. Would you like to listen to refresh your recollection? No, I believe you. Uh, I mean, did you say that then? Yes. So that's different than what you said on direct, correct? You said that these heirlooms, she left, and that was odd to you, correct? But in an interview in 2008, you told Detective Anderson that those heirlooms were stolen, correct? She didn't ask an answer. Sustained. She didn't answer the question. She still hasn't adopted that saying. She said, if it's said. So I'm asking her, you did asked she say her, that? You asked her if that was yes, and she said yes. So you're admitting that you said that to Detective Anderson. Objection, ask an answer. Sustained. So are you lying now or are you lying then? Objection, argumentative. Sustained. They both can't be true, correct? Objection. What is the objection? Argumentative. Sustained. Where's this jewelry now? Do you have it? I'm not sure. Well, if it's your mother's jewelry 
and your sister left it behind, that would mean you have it, correct? I'm wearing my mother's ring right now, sir. One of them. What about the ones that were stolen by David? I didn't see David steal anything. Your Honor, I would like to That's have a refresher confusion. recollection on this, please. You may. Sorry, I was playing what you said. You're fine. Yes. Can you rewind it? Because I think it just was briefly mentioned at the beginning. Thank you. Can't make out what I I just can't make out what I'm saying. It didn't restart. I just can't, I mumble so bad I can't make out one part is all. But I hear what you're saying about the set. So you were able to listen to a portion of that recording with Detective Anderson, correct? Yes. And you would agree that in that recording he asked you specifically about any heirlooms that Alyssa may have had. Yes. And you mentioned the set that Alyssa had, correct? Yes. And that it was stolen, correct? That was the part I couldn't make out, but that's what it, it seems like I was saying, yes. Okay. 
Now, that question, after listening to it, was asking about heirlooms, correct? Yes. At any point in that interview, did it say, I really thought it was weird she didn't take these heirlooms of my mom's? Did you ever say that to Detective Anderson? I, I'm, in the entire interview? I'm not sure, sir. Did you say it in that part of the quote that I just asked you? Did you bring up at all that it was odd that she left a family heirloom behind? Because that's when he specifically asked you about the heirloom, correct? Yeah. And in there, that statement was not given, was it? Uh, no, it was not. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Imbordino, any redirect? You, um, I think I heard you say a little earlier when <clears throat> Mr. Jackson was asking you questions that you had said to one of the detectives, and I don't recall whether it was Anderson or Summer Shoe, but that um, Alyssa was jealous that you were left alone. Yes. So let's assume you said that. What did you mean by that? Well, we were jealous of each other. Um, she was jealous that I had no supervision. I was allowed to do whatever I wanted, and I was jealous that she got to spend so much time with our father. Okay. Now, on a number of occasions in response to his questions, you said that's what you believed. Did you mean that's what you believed at the time? Yes. Yes. And so, for example, I think he asked you, did you say that uh, Alyssa made poor choices? And I think you said you believed she made poor cho choices. Uh, uh, what was that belief based upon? My father's statements about how bad she was. You said that you believed that she had behavior issues. You were under that impression. Well, what did you mean? You believed it. That I had to reconcile these memories I have from before and now. And yeah, that's what I believed at the time, that she was out of control and wild. But as I got older and did honestly a lot worse stuff than Alyssa, I realized that she was not out of control or wild. Now, are you a... Licensed psychologist or psychiatrist? No. So are you able to diagnose mental health problems? No. So when you, when you said to one of the detectives, if you said that uh, Alyssa had been diagnosed with ADHD, you didn't mean to say you diagnosed her, correct? Correct. Um, were you ever present when any physician diagnosed her? No. So what made you believe that she'd been diagnosed as with ADHD? My father told me that. When um, Mr. Jackson said, isn't it true that that camera was in the vent for years? And I think you said, no, it wasn't in the vent for years. Is that, was that your answer? 
Uh, yes, I believe that was so my vent. Could it have been in the vent in that house for years, given the fact that you hadn't lived there for years? No. Did you say that, um, or in one of those interviews with uh, detectives, either Anderson or Summershoe, you had made the statement that um, one of the one of the times that your your father would turn on the recorder for the for the surveillance cameras was when he left. Did you mean when he left the house? Yes. So if he wasn't there, yes, he would have turned it on. Yes. So do I understand you to, to say that your testimony is that Alyssa, your father had rules for Alyssa that he didn't have for you? Correct. What were some of the rules that he had for Alyssa that he didn't have for you? Objection outside the scope of cross. I didn't ask her about rules. Overruled, but I'll give you recross on that if you'd like. Um, I'm sorry, can you state the question one more time? Yeah, you said that, um, I thought you said, and maybe I'm mistaken, you said that um, you had more freedom than Alyssa. Yes. So when you said more freedom, were there rules that she had that you didn't have or vice versa? Yes. And what were some of those? I mean, I could basically come and go as I wanted. I didn't really have to check in. Um, I mean, I'm sure if I didn't show up at night, I would have been in trouble, but I was allowed to go and do whatever I wanted, basically. I also didn't have to go to school. Now, did either Detective Anderson or Detective Summershoe ask you to get a confession from the defendant? No. I think I heard you say on, on cross-examination that you just wanted to find answers. Yes. Answers to what? To what happened to Alyssa. Had you tried to get those answers on other occasions from your father? Yes. And had he ever provided you any answers? No. The um, Mr. Jackson asked you, isn't it true that you told detectives... And, you know, I, I want to make sure that I were clear on when some of these interviews occurred that you've been listening to portions of. So, f- for example, were you interviewed um, like 2008, 2009? Yes. The ones you've been listening to, is that when those occurred? Yes. So has your memory of things changed over the years? Yeah, I think I can see things more clearly now as an adult. He said, he asked you, did you tell detectives that you went to California one time or when you went with your, uh, with the defendant, your father, and uh, I don't know if this was my word or his word, staked out Lynette's house. Um, it, I wasn't clear. Do you remember sitting outside of Aunt Lynette's house? No. Well, if you, so you're not saying it didn't happen. Yeah, uh, correct. It could have happened. I just don't remember. Um, Is that something your father told you that he did? 
Objection foundation. She said she doesn't have any recollection of it apparently. Overruled. The witness may answer if the defendant told her that that's what he did. Um, he did say that part of his looking for Alyssa was investigating our aunts. Well, had you ever been with him when he was watching Alyssa? Yes. Uh, like where, for example? Objection outside the scope of cross. Overruled, but I'll give you recross on that if you'd like. Um, I had gone with him to watch Alyssa at Jack in the Box as well as when she stayed at our brother's apartment. So had she stayed with, you said her brother's or your brother's, when did that happen? That was, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the timeline now. Um, oh, that was the year, the, the year before, the summer before. Summer of 2000. Yes. She had spent some time with some of your brothers. Yes. Which, which ones? Mike and John. Now, Mr. Jackson asked you, uh, is it true that you were, they requested to interview you before trial, correct? And I think you said uh, they did, and you declined. Yes, correct. correct? Uh, had you been advised that you had a right to decline that interview? Yes. Under law? Yes. You, you may. Can I see that before he does that? I just want to, I, w I will show it to you before I show it to anybody else. That's not how rules work. Mr. Jackson, I believe, asked you, and these may not be his exact words, um, it, is it true that it appeared when you walked into Alyssa's room that it was in proper order, nothing out of place? Yeah, just the backpack stuff or what I thought was the stuff from her backpack on the ground. Did she normally keep her room clean and tidy? Yes. Did it appear clean and tidy to you? Besides that one area, yes. Um, now, the jewelry. Let's assume that you said in an interview that you believed that an uncle had taken some of um, the jewelry. Yeah, our cousin, yeah. Our, I'm sorry, cousin. I mean, is that something you saw happen? No. So why did you believe it? Objection relevance calls for hearsay. Um, can I hear the question again, counsel? Yeah, let me rephrase it. Uh, did you tell the detectives in an interview that you believed your cousin had taken some of that jewelry? Yes. Why did you believe that? Because that's what I was told. By whom? My father. Was there still some of that jewelry there, let's, let's assume some was taken. Was there still jewelry left that was important to Alyssa? Yeah, I'm wearing some now. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Imbordino. Mr. Jackson, did you want recross on the rules that the defendant had for Alyssa that he did not have for Sarah? Yes, Your Honor, briefly. When you're referring to these rules, back in 2001, you were 12 years old, correct? Yes. And you didn't do a lot, correct? Stayed home mostly. Before Alyssa went missing, yes. You were the sensible one back then, correct? That's what you told Detective Anderson? Yes. So the rules, when you're talking about the rules changing, 
You're saying the rules changed for you when you were 16 and 17 years old, not when you were 12. Because you didn't leave the house. That's what you told Detective Anderson, correct? That's what I told Detective Anderson. But no, the rules were different, sir. Okay. You said that you were a bad kid. You were doing all sorts of crazy things back then. That's what you told this jury. You did way worse things than Alyssa. You told this jury that, correct? We were talking about two separate times. Okay. So back in 2012, you weren't doing things worse than Alyssa, were you? In 2012, I was. I'm sorry, 2001, when you were 12. Before Alyssa left, I mean, no. No. And then, Mr. Jackson, did you want cross on examples of the uh, defendant watching Alyssa? No, that's fine, Your Honor. All right. Any, uh, any re-redirect? No. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, any members of the jury have any questions for the witness? We have a few. Counsel, please approach off the record. You'll come up the ramp uh, behind the witness. Ms. Turney, I've got a couple of questions from the jury. The first question is, could you describe your father? What was his job, girlfriends, other friends? Did he belong to clubs? Was he active at church? Uh, sure. Um, my father did not have a job since I was six years old. He went on disability after that. Um, he had maybe one or two friends, I can recall, um, our entire life. At one point, he did date Alyssa's teacher, um, but shortly after an incident, um, she was not in our lives anymore, and he never dated again to uh, at least brought anybody around. No clubs, no church, um, no organizations. He was mostly just at home with, with me. You described Alyssa as kind, outgoing, and brave. Why did you describe your sister as brave? She was really brave. Um, I didn't realize how brave she was. She was brave enough to stay. Alyssa was never afraid of uh, anything. She taught me to be brave. Uh, like when I was afraid of stuff in my closet, uh, she told me to open it up and scream at it uh, so that I would scare it back. So that's why I would describe Alyssa as brave. Mr. Jackson, any follow-up questions from the defense to the jury questions? Yes, yeah, just briefly about... Um... You said your dad was injured on the job, or he had a job, and then he got injured. Is that correct? Yes. And then he was collecting disability because of that injury? Yes. You hurt his knee or something? That's what I know now. That's not what I was told then. Thank you. Any follow-up questions from the state? No. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, ma'am. You, you may return to uh, the back of the courtroom, and the state may call its next witness. 
And I believe uh, this witness has asked not to be uh, have her face shown by the media. Is that correct? correct All right. So it's ordered that the media not uh, show this witness's face. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. If you'll please come forward towards me. Uh, right this way. Uh, the woman that's standing to my left is going to get your name from you, and then she's going to swear you in. Sandra, your say check. Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A. Last name is E, V is in Victor, S-E-I-C-H-I-K. Sorry. <laughs> I do. And ma'am, if you could please take a walk up that ramp and then have a seat on the witness stand here to my right. You'll see a little microphone there if you'll just make sure that you're speaking into that. Thank you. Mr. Bailey, you may proceed with direct examination of the witness whenever you're ready. Thank you, Judge. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury, ma'am? My name is Sandra Yevsechek. All right. And uh, where do you currently work? Uh, Sprouts Farmer's Market. All right. And do you live locally? I'm in Glendale. Okay. And, um, well, uh, do you remember a time when you worked at Jack in the Box? Yes. And were you a manager at that time? I was first assistant manager. Okay. When was that? Um, I worked, well, I worked for them a long time, but at that, um, it was like from 99 to 2003, I believe. All right, so you were work were you working with them back in uh, 2001? Yes. And did you work at multiple Jack in the Boxes during your career there? Yes. And was there one in particular that you were working in at in May of 2001? Yeah, on 40th Street and Bell. Okay. Um, and was that in Paradise Valley? Yes. All right. Did you have uh, did you manage an employee at, at various times? By the name of Alyssa Turney. Yes. And do you remember her? Yes. All right. Um, and did you do a police interview uh, about this back in 2008? Yes. And did you do a defense interview as well? I don't know if that was in 2008, but I have, yeah. So sometimes lawyers ask terrible questions, <laughs> even though we think we don't. Um, at some point, did you do a defense interview? Yes. Okay. Um, how... How did you know Alyssa from your time at Jack in the Box? Um, she was one of my employees. All right. And so were you able to observe her at work? Yes. And were part of your duties to manage her and monitor uh, her work responsibilities? Yes. How was she as an employee? She was a great employee. How long approximately um, were you there supervising Alyssa? Probably about six months. All right. And do you remember what Alyssa's hours approximately were during that time? Um, it would probably after school, so between 2 and 3 till probably 9 or 10 at night. All right. And do you recall if she was uh, under 18 at that time? I believe so. Were there restrictions on when uh, individuals who were under 18 could work their yeah, hours? Yes, they couldn't work past 10. Okay. Um, you said she was a great employee. She was. For I've managed many teenagers, and she was one of the better ones. Why do you say that? Um, she, you didn't have to give her a lot of direction. She, you know, would know what to do once she learned, and she was real friendly with our customers and the other employees. And did she did she create any problems for you or other employees while she was at work? No. What hours were you working during that time? Um, normally, I worked 9 p.m. till 6 a.m., but I did do some 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. shifts. Okay. It kind of varied. And I had a pinch hit at various times? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, did you observe any drug issues with her? No. Okay. And did you know if she had a boyfriend? I honestly don't remember if she did or not. All right. Um, do you remember, did you meet any of her family? Um, I met her father. And how did you meet her father? Um, he would come up to the restaurant, um, while she was working and she had introduced us. Okay. Do you, 
do you recall if your um, if her father was also would also watch her from the parking lot? Um, Jackson, yeah. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yeah, there was times that he would be in the parking lot while she was on shift. Okay. At some point, did you become aware? Did Alyssa not show up for a shift? Yes. And what did you do? Um, I called to see if maybe she was just running late or, you know, something had was sick and had forgot to call in. Or Okay. And uh, what response were you given? Um, that um, uh, Mr. Turney had just got home and her backpack miss was missing and there was a note saying she had ran away. Okay. And do you recall if this was in May of 2001? It sounds about the right time period, yeah. Um, and based on your recollection, can you remember a date? No, not an exact date, no. Do you remember a possible day of the week? Honestly, I don't. It's fine. Um, did you did you, you know some of the other employees that Alyssa worked with? Yes. Um, was one of those employees named Chris Rittenauer? Yes. Was another employee named Mike Stanley? Yes. And do you supervise those individuals? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you received um, your wages from Jack in the Box? How are you paid? We are paid by paycheck every two weeks. Okay. And how would, what was that process? It, was it by check only? Yes. Yeah. They would come in on Fridays, but payday was actually on Saturday. All right. And if an employee wanted money from their check, was that something that Jack in the Box would assist them with? No. So they, an employee would have to go to a bank or find some other means to get the money? Correct. Can, can um, you said that the paychecks come in on Friday? Yes, they came in... Um through uh, UPS on Fridays, and then they, we would distribute them on Saturdays. Okay, so Jack in the Box received them on Fridays, these checks on Fridays. Correct. And then they would be distributed to employees on Saturday? Correct. And as, a, as part of management, you did you have the ability to have their checks on that Friday? Um, we weren't supposed to. On occasion, the store manager would say if somebody had a situation and they needed their check to go ahead and give it to them, but they weren't dated till the Saturday, so getting them cashed was, you know, I don't know if they would be able to do that. But Okay. And, and did Alyssa ever come to ch collect another check? after uh, she missed that shift? Not that I'm aware of, no. And I guess in that same vein, did you ever see Alyssa again? No. After she failed to show up for that shift? No. Okay. No additional questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Any cross-examination from the defense? Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. So, ma'am, as you're aware, Alyssa went missing in 2001. Yes. And you were her supervisor at the time. We've established that. Yes. Um, but the police actually never came to talk to you in 2001. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the first time you remember speaking with the police was in 2008. Correct. 
seven years after Alyssa had disappeared. Correct. Okay. Um, so there are some things that you don't remember, and that's understandable. Um, and during the defense interview, we had discussed possibly a letter that you may have written. Um, they had mentioned something about a letter that was written, yeah. And we have a copy of that. Would it help if I gave you a copy of that to refresh oh, your recollection? maybe so, yeah. Just a moment, Your Honor. You may. So for the record, I'm showing the witness state's exhibit 72. I honestly don't recall. <laughs> So, ma'am, I just showed you um, a letter, and you had indicated that you had no independent recollection of it. Right. I honestly don't. Does it look like your handwriting? It does look like my handwriting. Okay. Yes. So, ma'am, I mean, is it fair to say that if it's your handwriting, you probably wrote it? More than likely, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, your name is on the, the page of it, right? Right. And then on, on the back, it says that um, it's for Alyssa's dad. The letter. Did you remember seeing that on the back? Oh, I didn't, but uh, yeah. Would you like to see it again? No, that's fine. And in this writing, there's a description of a male with blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. 5'10". Yes. Both arms completely tattooed. Yes. Large holes in ears. Yes. Now, when you worked at the Jack in the Box, there were a lot of customers who came in. Yes. <laughs> you don't remember all of them. No. But at the time, you remembered this customer. Apparently, I did, yes. <laughs> and you gave this description to Mike Turney, okay. Alyssa's father. Yeah, apparently, yeah. There must have been a reason that you gave him this description. Yeah, I mean, there must have been. I just don't recall. Possibly a connection to Alyssa. Possibly, yeah. And you don't have an independent memory of this note now. I do not, honestly. Which makes sense. This is 20, over 20 years later. Correct. Right. And you didn't have a memory of it during the police interview in 2008. No, I did not. But the first time you spoke with the police was seven and a half years after Alyssa's disappearance. Correct. And you only knew Alyssa for six months. Correct. Only in a work capacity. Correct. You weren't particularly close to her. No. So it's understandable that you might not remember 10, 20 years later. Correct. <laughs> Ma'am, I want to turn now to um, what you do remember about Alyssa. Okay. okay? Um, you testified that Alyssa worked part-time. Correct. She was still in high school. Correct. Uh, she worked at Jack in the Box for about six months. Correct. Yes. She worked the second shift starting in the afternoon. Correct. And you worked the night shift. Most of the time, yes. Because of the laws and because of her age, she usually didn't get off work later than 9 or 10 p.m. That's correct. Okay. Um, but she would work the afternoon to evening shift. Correct. So sometimes she would get out when it was dark outside. Absolutely. Okay. And you had testified on direct that 
you had witnessed Mike, Alyssa's dad, in the parking lot. Correct. Is it possible that he was in the parking lot to pick her up? Correct. Yeah, it's possible. Now, Alyssa was much younger than you. Yes. So you had mentioned that your conversations were a little bit more surface level. Correct. And you didn't really remember much about what you had talked about with Alyssa. No, not too much. You know, normal. I ha I was I was the mother of four teenagers mm -hmm. at the time, so it was teen you know teenage right. stuff. Right, right. Um, but you do remember her mentioning California. Yes, she had mentioned California. And she was saving her money. Yes. So just a few more questions. Um, you've met Mike, Mr. Turney. I have. He would come into the restaurant sometimes when Alyssa was working. Absolutely. You told the police that he would come in and talk to us all the time. Yes. And you're referring to us as other employees. Yes. Okay. He would order something to drink. Yes. Um, and there's also other people who would occasionally stop in to see Alyssa. I'm sure there was, yeah. Well, you'd mentioned it to the police that there yeah, was. So. Yeah, you know, I heard some of her friends from school, because their school was just, yeah. you know, right there, and they would stop by. And... and you had mentioned to the police that there was a guy who would occasionally stop by the restaurant to see Alyssa. Probably did, you know. <laughs> I'm trying and, to remember. And it's okay. <laughs> I know it's been a long time, so if you don't have a memory of that now, that's that's okay. But if that's something you told the police... Yeah, I'm sure there was, you know, she had uh, male and female friends that would come by and, you know, see her. And I'm sure there was some that were regular that, you know, I had seen more than once. Sure. I'm referring to somebody in, in the interview that you said that there was a guy who would come in um, to the restaurant and that guy stood out to you. Um, I can't place him offhand, but I'm, you know, that's very possible. Yes. Now, after Alyssa went missing, Mike stopped by the jack by the jack in the box. Yes, it was about a day or two later. More, yeah, probably a day or two. Yeah. Okay. Mike was looking for information about Alyssa. Yes. And no one had any information about where she had gone. No. Okay. And he actually came in several times after that. Uh, yes. Looking for her. Yes. Okay. So in those first few weeks. You heard from Mike. Yes. But you didn't hear from the police. No. And ma'am, you testified on direct about a man named Mike Stanley. Yes. Are you, and, and he was the, um, one of the other shift managers, right? Correct. Okay. And he worked the night shift. Yes. So he had to be over 18. Yes. At the time. Are I you, believe so. Okay. Are you aware of how old he was? I'm not offhand, no, probably. Like, if he was working at nights, he was over 18, but okay. I'm not sure. All right. All right, just a moment, Your Honor. Ma'am, yeah, I and mean, I know this was a long time ago, but I'm, do you remember any um, any conversations or any issues that came up between Alyssa and Mike Stanley? No, I'm not okay. aware of any, no. Okay, all right, thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Ms. Hicks. Mr. Bailey, any redirect? Uh, thank you, Judge. Do you remember anyone concerning coming, uh, that you, when you're managing Alyssa, anyone concerning? that came to visit Alyssa? No. And if if there was a customer that was concerning a concern to you about their treatment or what they're doing with an employee, is that something that you would have reported? Oh, absolutely.
Judge, that's all the questions I'll ask. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Ladies and gentlemen, any members of the jury have any questions for this witness? It appears that there are none. May the witness be excused. Yes, sir. Thank any you. objection? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably a good time for our afternoon break. Uh, it's 3.15 now. I'll ask you to be back in the jury room at 3.25. That's 10 minutes from now. You can leave everything in the courtroom if you'd like. Please remember the admonition. The jury is now excused. Please be seated. Let the record show the presence of counsel and the defendant. Jury is not present. We did have two juror questions during that session uh, that I've numbered as one and two and will file with the clerk. Neither side had any objection to either of the questions and they were read in their entirety. Uh, is there anything the state wanted to add to the record regarding juror questions? No, sir. Anything the defense wanted to add to the record? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else from the state before we break? No. Anything else from the defense? No, Your Honor. All right. We're off the record. Uh, counsel, how many witnesses uh, left for today?
Please be seated. We're back on the record in State versus Turney. Let the record show the presence of counsel, the defendant, and the jury. The state may call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. State calls Charity Robinson. Ma'am, if you'll please come forward and give the clerk your name, and she'll swear you in. And then, ma'am, if you could just take a walk up that ramp there and then have a seat on the witness stand here to my right. And you'll see that little black microphone there if you can just make sure you're speaking into that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bailey, whenever you're ready, you may proceed with your direct examination of the witness. Thank you, Judge. Um, Charity, can you please introduce yourself to the jury? And I forgot to note that you have a name change, so if you could provide your name back in 2001 and then now as well. Okay, so Charity Robinson, when I knew Alyssa, and Charity Brand this day, okay. um, and I was friends with Alyssa. Okay. Um, uh, what do you do right now for work? I'm an office manager. And uh, do you live locally? I live in Surprise. Okay. Um, where did you grow up? Mostly in Arizona. I was born in Utah, but I've lived the majority of my life here in Arizona. All right. So did you live back in, Ari in Arizona back in 2001? I did. And did you live in Arizona? At what point did you move from Utah to Arizona? Uh, at the age of about two years old. Right. Um, did you do a police interview in 2008? I did. Okay. And do you remember talking um, about how you knew Alyssa? I do. How did you meet Alyssa? Uh, through a mutual friend that attended the same school as us. Okay. And approximately what age were you when that happened? I'm a little bit uh, hairy on that because I want to say that it was at least for my sophomore and junior year, but it may have only been just before my junior year and then throughout my junior year. Um, but it would have been her freshman, sophomore time frame. Okay, so can we take that to mean that you are a little bit older than Alyssa? Yes, a couple of years older. And we'll have to be careful. I do it often, um, not speaking over each other, because uh, this young lady in front of us has to take down everything we say. Um, so we'll just be careful about not doing that. Okay. Um, all right. Um, now... Do you, do you know what schools Alyssa went to as far as high school? Uh, the only two that I'm aware of are Barry Goldwater and Paradise Valley. All right. And did she go to Barry Goldwater before she went to Paradise Valley? As far as I understand. Okay. What high schools did you go to? Just Barry Goldwater. All right. Um, so you said you're not entirely sure when you met Alyssa, but it was when I you were in high school? I remember when I met her. Okay. Um, I just don't remember the timing exactly. Um, a mutual friend of ours had brought her over to my house. I think it was my birthday party, and that's why I believe it could have been my 16th birthday party, 17th birthday party. Um, but I, I met her through a mutual friend that had brought her along to the party, and we just hit it off from there. Okay. Um, well, I guess when you say hit it off, um, what does that mean? How well of friends were you? Well, um, we just had a really good time together that evening and started to make plans to hang out with each other. She started to spend a lot of time at my house, um, and she just became very close with my, not only myself, but my family. Um, and I guess the rest is history because, you know, as teenage girls, you know, what do you do to make friends? You hang out, you, you know, try to do things together, you discuss mutual interests. Um, we just really got along really well and became very close. What sorts of things did you and Alyssa like to do together? Uh, well, we were young and neither one of us drove. Um, at the time, neither one of us was really working. Like I had a job, but it was 
paying for things that I needed and that kind of thing. But we weren't driving, so we were pretty limited in what we could do. Um, the majority of the time was spent just hanging out at my house. Um, anything from reading magazines to doodling to um, we like to write letters to friends, so there would be a bit of that. Um, and we just hung out, you know, with my family and, and around the neighborhood. And every once in a while, we'd, you know, get the privilege of going to the mall or to a movie. Um, but, you know, the most that we did was just hang around each other, listen to music, and just do your typical teenage things. What was Alyssa like as a friend? <sighs> Alyssa was kind. Uh, she was loyal. She was caring. She was protective. She was funny. Um, she was just a really kind and sweet person. Uh, one of the things that stick out to me to this day is how if she loved you, uh, she would tell anybody she could about you. She would just brag you up to, you know, all, all of your, her other friends. You know, I heard all about everybody. I heard all about, you know, um, Stacy, all about um, everybody. Just she would talk about everybody. She would talk about her brothers and how much she loved them. And she would talk about Sarah and how much she loved her. And she just really always kind of, I guess, went out of her way to speak well and speak love to the people that she cared about. So you talked a little bit about um, some of her family members. Um, did you ever see Alyssa and Sarah interacting? Yeah, yeah, did, a few times. Did, apologize, that's my fault. How did they interact? Uh, like a typical sister relationship would be. Um, I'm the oldest of five with three sisters. So, you know, I think along with that comes the territory of a little bit of spatting back and forth, a little bit of, hey, don't take my hairbrush, a little bit of, um, you know, hey, get out of my room, but a lot of love at the same time. Um, she was very protective over Sarah. She loved her a lot. She spoke kindly about her despite, you know, the probably arguments that they got in with each other, but... She had a lot of kind things, like I said, to say about everyone she cared about. And uh, did you know any of her brothers? Um, yeah, a little. I had met each of them maybe a couple of times. Um, there was one time that sticks out for me pretty good that uh, we went down to Salt River. And we went down the river with, I believe, John and Mike that day. It was a really good day. Did Alyssa have appeared to have a close relationship with any one brother in particular? Um, I think that if I had to choose, I would have to say that it was John um, because she did speak on, about him a lot. And um, she did, you know, let me know that he was one that she would run to if she needed someone that, you know, she could talk to that she felt good talking with. And so I would say that out of them all, you know, she mentioned him the most, but I wouldn't say that that speaks to favoritism necessarily. And that's a good point to be clear. It wasn't in the context of not liking other brothers. Right, just having more to talk about perhaps okay. regarding John. Did you, um, did you, well, did you know she was dating anyone? Um, at the time... That she was at Goldwater, or? Did, yeah, did you know of anyone she was dating? At Goldwater, you know, she had a few short relationships um, at that age. A lot of them don't really uh, go beyond a couple of weeks, a couple of months. So she did have a few short relationships at Goldwater, um, nothing really lasting. Did you know about a boyfriend by the name of John Lackman? I knew of him uh, simply because she informed me of him, but I had never met him um, and know nothing of him outside of what she would have told me at the time. Okay. Now, did you know if Alyssa had a cell phone? Uh, it's my understanding that she did. Did she ever contact me on it? No. Okay. 
And do you know if she used the, so uh, this is one of those instances where going 20 years into the future, uh, life changes a little bit. A little. Did you know her to d use something like the internet? No, I mean, no, because there was nothing that I would have been doing on the internet with her. So, and it's not something that she talked about or Back that I recall her ever mentioning having a particular interest in. Back in this time, were there things like uh, social media that you uh, were aware of? You know, we had, I think, and I may be a little bit off on time frame, but AOL was a thing, and there was online chat communities for that. But, I, you know, one thing that sticks out for me in that time frame and being able to use even a um, platform like that is the fact that, you know, in my particular household, there was seven of us. So, you know, someone always needed the phone or, you know, the, the computer and, and so on. So um, I didn't personally use it a lot, and... I don't recall any instances where she explains or describes using it in any way to. And, and that's a good point. Uh, the questions that we're asking you are just based on what you know. Yeah, um, I, I don't recall that ever being uh, an interest that she and I shared at all. All right. Did you, did you know Sarah's st or Alyssa's stepfather? Did I know him? Correct. Uh, yes, I did know him. How did you know him? Just in the times that uh, he would be bringing her over to my house or picking her up. Um, and there was a couple of times that I visited their home. Okay. Um, well, do you see him in the courtroom today? I do. Can you please state where he is seated and what he is wearing? He's to my left here in a beige gray suit. May the record reflect the witness identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. Did you see Alyssa and the defendant interact with each other? Yes. What was that interaction like? Um, most of the time it was short because, as I said, it would be in the case of being dropped off or picked up. Um, in a few cases, you know, maybe for a ride to the mall. Um, and in most cases, she and I would spend that time chatting with each other, but every now and again, it would be them discussing, um, you know, whatever his expectations of her were normally. Um, but yeah, I did, I did witness them interact from time to time All right. in short bursts. Were you, were you over... Did you ever visit Alyssa at her house? Once or twice. Um, one time that sticks out for me is uh, a time that I had joined her and Sarah to trick or treat. And I think I was 15, or no, I would, I would have been older. I would have been 16 or 17, and that would have made Alyssa about 16. And of course, that's a little old, but we still had a lot of fun. Were you aware, were you aware of any video surveillance or recording that were going on in that household? I am aware to the extent that she informed me. So you did not have any personal knowledge of recordings occurring in that house? Outside of seeing the, the phone recorder, no. So you, you actually saw the phone recorder? You can see that pretty easily, um, but I did not go inspecting for the other ones that she revealed. Were so video, potential video surveillance cameras was something that was unaware to, you were unaware of? Uh, only for the fact that she described them to me. I had never witnessed them personally. All right. You said you only went over there a couple times, um, but it sounded like you were very good friends. Yeah. Um, why was that? Why did I not go over there very often? Yes. Um, Alyssa preferred to spend time at my home. Okay. And can we take that to mean that Alyssa visited you at your house often. That's right. And it probably will loop back around to a little bit of what we've talked about, but what would you do with Alyssa at your house? Um, a, a lot of like we described earlier, I had described earlier, we would you know, most of the time just hang out in my room, watch movies, read magazines, pick on my brother and sisters. Um, she She had a bit of a ornery sense of humor so she liked to to play small pranks so we'd do stuff like that to my you know my siblings and 
Um, every once in a while, I'll go to the mall. Every once in a while, you know, catch an actual movie at the theater. Uh, but for the most part, it was literally just hanging around with each other, you know, laughing about ridiculous things and um, just doing your typical teenage stuff. You know, makeup, painting our nails, you know, making bracelets, friendship bracelets, like just living a normal teenage life. Uh, and did you, oh, I'm gonna this. did you know of any source of conflict that was in Alyssa's life? Uh, yeah, she described often and frequently the type of conflict that she had with her father. Did she complain about any other people with regularity? No. Now, what we have talked about was your friendship with Alyssa. Um, and you're obviously aware that, are you aware that Alyssa has gone missing? I am. And are you aware of the day she went missing? I am. Uh, do you know what day that was? May 17th, 2001. Now, in the days and weeks leading up to that date, how much time were you spending with Alyssa? None. Why not? Objection. We were for bed. Uh, hold on. Objection, Your Honor. <clears throat> what is the objection? May we approach, Your Honor? It's a hearsay, but may we approach? Um... You may. Take a brief uh, legal issue up with counsel. I'm just going to ask you to go to the jury room. It should only take a few minutes. Please remember the admonition. You can leave everything in the courtroom. The jury's now excused. Let the record show the presence of counsel and the defendant jury is not present. Uh, so the question was, why did you not spend time with Alyssa around the time of her disappearance? And the objection was hearsay. So help me understand what the hearsay objection is for that question. Your Honor, this is a specific motion in limine that was filed in your court where you rule that that does not come in. Your ruling states that they can ask questions about if they stopped hanging out, but not why. That, that was the exact point of this. They brought it up knowing they was going to elicit that answer, which is in direct violation of your motion in limine. So before I hear anything else, let's look at that ruling. And counsel, if you can look at the ruling and just refer me to exactly which portion of the ruling you're referring to.
It is not on the docket yet, but your ruling was in open court. I didn't see it. That one never came up yet. The first day, no, the minute entry from the first trial day. Oh. It's at the very bottom. Your Honor, it is on page six of the 619-2023 minute entry. The court is in receipt of defendant's motion in limine, Charity Robinson testimony, bullet points one through eight, filed 5-10-2023. It is ordered, let me find it. Number four, granting defendant's motion to preclude the witness from testifying about any reference to or testimony regarding Alyssa's alleged treatment statement that the defendant forbade her from being friends with Charity. However, Charity may testify about any incidents that she witnessed. This question was directly at why, and she was about to say that, and she did actually say at the beginning of the interview that it was that he forbade, the defendant forbade us. That is in direct violation of the minute entry. Question, the state knew that question was going to draw out that answer and chose to do it anyway in violation of the, of the court order. Any response from the state? State's position that uh, if you can talk into the microphone. Thank you, Judge. State's position is showing that trying to clarify why she did not spend time with Alyssa that she had not had prior con contact with her into the weeks and months leading up. That's, that was the point of the question, not to elicit that the father forbade her. So when you ask why they had not been spending time together around the time of her disappearance, what did you anticipate the answer to be? I, my, I anticipated the answer being we, um, our relationship had stopped and we were not spending time with each other. Okay. That was my, my, that was my response. Okay. My belief. Okay. So have you instructed the witness that she can't talk about any statements that Alyssa made to her about uh, the defendant uh, forbidding them from being friends. I believe I told the, list, the witness that the witness cannot speak to anything that she does not have personal knowledge of, and I've told the witness of the areas that have been specifically precluded. Okay. All right. Well, there's certainly a way to answer that question that does not run afoul of the court's ruling. So... I'll allow the, the... But her answer already said out of her mouth that the defendant forbade. I, I didn't... That was what she said. I didn't hear what her answer was because I was trying to clarify the objection. So to the extent that the jury heard that, you can make a motion to strike. I'll grant it. And then Mr. Bailey may ask his next question. I think we're all on the same page at this point. Any will, the, will the defense and the court allow me to lead through that area so we can be sure that the witness does not go into that area. Yes, I, we talked about that on previous things. I have no objection to that, but that's, I mean, I, just, I think the cat's already out of the bag. I mean, to, to sit here and say, oh, that's not what I wanted when it was the exact question it is kind of, it's running afoul of the rules, Your Honor. And it seems that everything that's going on in this case is they're, they're trying to circumvent the court's orders. Well, again, I think there is a way to answer that question that runs afoul of the court's How? rule. This, I'm still speaking. I think there's a way to answer the question that runs afoul of the court's ruling. I think there's a way to answer the question that does not run afoul of the court's ruling. Uh, again, I didn't hear the witness answer. If you did, I'm happy to entertain a motion to strike in front of the jury, but uh, I didn't hear it. So. I am asking for that, and I'm also asking for a mistrial with prejudice. This is state prosecutorial misconduct. This is eliciting information that has been precluded. This isn't the first time this has happened in this trial. The motion for mistrial is denied, and 
it does it doesn't do you any good to ask me to or to strike while the jury's not here. I, ask I me to strike when the jury is here, and I'll do it in front of the jury and direct them to disregard. Anything sure. else before we bring the jury in? Yes, Judge. There's going to be the state would elicit additional testimony from this witness that when she stopped seeing Alyssa, their friendship did not discontinue at that point. They continued to try to write to each other. They continued to see her at, at, in places other than, and I will make sure I don't say this, but other, other than when her father was present. So the state intends to go into that as well. Or, as long as you're not violating any rule of the court. I don't, I don't see them. I didn't see either as being violating the rule, Judge. Okay. Anything else before we bring the jury in? Anything else before we bring the jury in? No, I would just maybe ask that the county attorney go over the areas that are not be precluded so we don't have this issue again. I didn't understand what you just said. I would, I would ask the county attorney to show Ms. Robinson the areas or talk to her about the areas that she is not allowed to go into just so we're clear that it doesn't happen again. Well, I think he's indicated that he has already told her that. So, well, I, I, it's a it's a great idea. He's told me he's already done it. Okay. And then she still violated it. Anything else before we bring the jury in? Our judge. All right. Uh, I've seemed to have lost Angela. Somebody's phone appears to be ringing. Please be seated. We are back on the record. Let the record show the presence of counsel, the uh, defendant, and the jury. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you had a motion. Yes, Your Honor. I would... Uh Motion to strike the witness's last statement. Uh, the uh, court will grant the motion to strike and will direct the jury to disregard her last answer. Mr. Bailey, you may ask your next question. Thank you. And some of these questions I'm going to lead you through. Um, so they may require just a yes or no answer. What, do you know the date that Alyssa went missing? Yes. What date was that? May 17th, 2001. Did you stop spending time with Alyssa in the months and weeks leading up to that day? Months leading to. Do you know approximately how long before that date? Maybe 10 months. Did you still want to spend time with Alyssa? I did. And based, this is based on your interaction. Did you have interactions with Alyssa? She wrote me uh, through the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, and every now and again, when she would make it on my side of town, she'd try to pop into my house and say hi. Um, and then there was one time that she showed up at my work and visited with me. So one of the things you still do, did was write letters back and forth to each other. I didn't write her. She wrote me. Thank you. So she wrote you? Mm -hmm. Was that a yes? Yes. Now you said 
you're aware of the last day, uh, of the, the day that Alyssa went missing. How are you aware of that date? I first heard about it because someone had noticed her flyer. And then not too long after that, Michael Turney called my home to speak to my mother and informed us at that point that she was missing. Okay. Did you... Now, on the last day of school, were you two... Did, was your school situation such that you could see each other at school? Between classes. Um, and then we didn't have any classes together that I recall, but, you know, sometimes you would end up in the same class as lower classmen for things like art or PE, but um, most of the time she and I would just see each other in passing. Okay. And you said you received, uh, there was a phone call by the defendant at your house? That's right. Well, I did not receive the call and, personally. And that's what I was going to clarify. Who, how did you become aware of that? My mother informed me she received the call. Okay. Did you do anything at that point uh, to try to locate Alyssa? I didn't have any way, yeah, any phone number or I didn't know who her friends were at the time outside of a few names that she had mentioned. Um, I didn't really had no recourse to, to try to locate her. Okay. And when you, the time that you could see Alyssa, how would you, you said you didn't text, you didn't call her by her cell phone? How would you try to get in contact with her if she was? I basically just waited for her to reach out to me. Okay. And have you done anything um, since that time in an attempt to locate or hear from Alyssa? Uh, when Google became a thing, I started to look for her name and search her name and see what I could find out. And that's actually how I found John eventually on MySpace, I think. Um, yes, over the years, I've made attempts to see what I can find out. Okay. And uh, since uh, May 17, 2001, have you ever heard from Alyssa? No. And have you ever seen Alyssa again? No. No additional questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Cross-examination, Mr. Jackson. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My understanding is that you met Alyssa when she was a freshman at Barry Goldwater? I believe so. And you would have been a junior that year? Uh, I would have been a sophomore. I was a sophomore when I met her. She was one. I think we're a year apart. One year apart, okay. Would you have graduated from Barry Goldwater the year she disappeared? Yes. And you would regularly see her till the end of her sophomore year? That's correct? right. And that would have been the end of your junior year? That's right. But the last time you saw Alyssa was about six months before she ran away, correct? Uh, roughly, yeah. It was when I was employed at Susie Mama Bear. Uh, and the time period for that is a little hairy for me, but it would have had to have been prior to February of, of that year. Is that when you quit that place? That's right. Okay. So at some point she came to visit you and this was a short, brief five minute encounter. Yeah. And you never saw or spoke with her again after that. That's right. You described Alyssa as a loving person. Yes. You also told Detective Anderson she could be mischievous. Not in a harmful way. Sure. You told her she was mischievous. That's what we told the detective. Yeah, that's the word I chose. That's right. You told him she was boy crazy. Uh, I said that. No. Detective Anderson. Uh, I think that every 16, 17 year old girl's a little boy crazy, but I wouldn't say that it was anything out of the norm. Okay. You said she liked, she was a party girl and loved to go out. I said that she was a party girl and loved to go out. Well, 
I don't recall saying that, but I don't see why I would because we didn't really have any means to go out. Okay. Did you ever describe her as a space cadet? Hmm. I don't remember. I don't recall referring to her as a space cadet. Could she be a space cadet? I mean, those, those were your words. Uh, you know, maybe after we smoked a joint. Okay. Um, she didn't talk about future plans with you? She kind of lived in the moment, I think, is what you told the she detective? Did, she did discuss future plans with me. You told the detective that she didn't talk about future plans and she lived in the moment. I need a little more context to really reveal to you why I have said that exactly. Uh, but she did speak to me about future plans. Okay. It was your observation that Sarah and Alyssa were treated differently, correct? Yes. Sarah got positive attention? Correct. Alyssa got negative attention? Not always, but for the majority of the time, yeah. But that's what you told the detective. They, they were treated differently. Alyssa got negative attention, correct? She got, yes, negative attention. But Alyssa did get some positive attention. Yes. When she was behaving and doing good. That's an opinion. Okay. Um, well, when she was, at times she was allowed to go out with her friends, correct? Yeah. She went over to your house? Yeah, she was allowed at my house. She was allowed to go to school dances? Yeah, that's actually one of the things that we were allowed to do and enjoyed quite much. In regards to the dances. Sorry. In regards to the negative attention, is it possible the negative attention was because she was misbehaving? I do not believe so. Doing drugs? I do not believe so. Drinking? I do not believe so. She was sneaking out. I don't know about that. She was doing poorly in school? I don't know about that either. You were at the tourney home several times, correct? A couple. You even spent the night once? Once, yeah. Were you aware of um, contracts that Mr. Turney had Alyssa sign? Because she had I'm informed asking, me, are you, yes. Are you aware? I am aware. Okay. Are you aware of a contract that he had your parents sign? He attempted to, but they did not oblige. Were you present when that took place? I was not. Okay, so you don't have any knowledge of what went on with that conversation except for what your mom may have told you? What my mom did tell me. But I'm not going to ask you, you're not allowed to say what other people say. So you don't, you don't have any personal knowledge of those contracts? No. Did you ever I see them? Not. I did not see them. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. Bailey, any redirect? No, Your Honor. follow-up questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, any members of the jury have any questions for this witness? It appears that there are none. May the witness be excused. The witness may be Any objection? Not the Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Thank you. You're welcome. And the state may call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state will call uh, John Turney. Sir, if you'll please come forward and approach the clerk, she'll get your name from you and, and swear you in. Sir, if you'll please take a walk up the ramp and have a seat on the witness stand here to my right. Approach. On or off? Off the record. Yes. Why don't you come up behind the witness?
Mr. Bailey, whenever you're ready, you may uh, proceed with your direct examination of the witness. Thank you, Judge. Uh, sir, can you please introduce yourself? I'm John Turney. Okay. And um, where do you currently live? In California. All right. How long have you lived in California? Uh, five and a half years now. All right. And um, what do you do for work? Uh, I work for a gas company. Okay. Um, now, going back a little bit, uh, uh, where were you born? In Torrance, California. Okay. And who is uh, your mother and father? Uh, my mother is Barbara, and my father is also named John and lives in California. Okay. Um, Now, well, did you do some interviews with uh, the uh, Phoenix Police Department? I believe I had one with Summer Shoe. Okay. Uh, so you have done, and do you know if that was approximately back in 2008, 2009? I, I, yeah, I don't have a timeline on that one. That's fine, but you, you recall doing an interview? Yes. Okay. Um, how, well, what was, how was rela uh, Alyssa related to you? Uh, she's my sister. Okay. And so we've heard a little bit about step-siblings and, and so forth, but was she your biological sister? Yes, through my mother. All right. Um, and again, your mother uh, was Barbara? Yes. Now, at some point, uh, did Barbara uh, marry the defendant? Yes. Okay. And do you recall when that was? Yeah. Um, I think I was seven, so uh, 86. Okay. Something like that. At some point, um, well, where were you living when that happened? In Phoenix. All right. So at some point, uh, uh, Barbara moved you to Phoenix? I uh, moved here when I was about four. Okay. And was she already uh, with, uh, married to the defendant at that time? No. Okay. Uh, so she, she brought you and Alyssa to Phoenix, and is that where she met? No, Alyssa was, no, Alyssa was not born yet. Alyssa so, was born in Phoenix. So we're going, we're going back a little bit. We're probably uh, talking over each other. Um, when was Alyssa born? 80, 84. And was... She born in Phoenix or California? In Phoenix. All right. Um, and so, how, do you remember at what age she came to live? You and her came to live with Michael, uh, the defendant, Michael Turney. How old I was? How old she was? She was uh, maybe three. At some point, uh, does your mother? Um, Get sick. Yes. And uh, when did she pass away? In 1993. Okay. Once she passed away, um, where were you and Alyssa living? Um, in in Reading at the time, actually in California. At this point, did you know um, Michael, or excuse me, Michael Seth? My brother. Correct. Yes. Did you know Rhett Turney? Yes. Did you know James Turney? Yes. And uh, were those your stepbrothers? Yes. Do you do you recall why you moved to Phoenix? Originally. Correct. Um, no. Um, and also. Uh, 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 Sarah Turney, is that your stepsister? Mm -hmm. okay. Is that a yes? Yes, sorry. That's a, a good. Not my stepsister. She's my biological sister as well. Okay, that's a good point. If uh, it comes up from time to time, uh huhs and mms don't translate well, so we need to say yes or no. Um, so it goes a little without saying, but. Uh, is the defendant your step uh, stepfather? Yes, yeah, my adopted father. And how long did you live with him? Um, 
10, 11 years. All right. Um, that whole time, was Alyssa and Sarah living with you as well? Yes. And um, did Rhett and James live, live with you for a period of time as well? Yes. Do you recall when you moved out from the defendant's um, residence? Um, not the year per se, but uh, maybe 1997. And how old would you have been at that time? Uh, 18. Okay. <clears throat> now, can you describe a little bit what your relationship was like with Alyssa? Um, we were close. I, as we had grown up together and she's, you know, I was her big brother. Um, so... The fact that you had the same mother, Barbara, um, did that? Did you feel that created some kind of special relationship between you and this family uh, dynamic? I'm sure it was. I mean, it was her and I brought into this new family, so I, we were close. Now, did you still get along um, with your stepbrothers? Yes. And did you get along with Sarah Turney? Yes. Uh, did you get along with the defendant? Yes. Okay. Um, so we we have heard and even seen some photos of Alyssa, um, but we don't really have a context of what her physical appearance and description is like. So um, do you remember, and obviously inches and feet aren't necessarily um, important if you can't recall that, but about how tall Alyssa was? Uh, maybe five, six. Okay. Five, six, five, seven. Um, was, she, let me put it this way. Was, she, what did she appear to be a, a taller than average? Maybe girl. Yes. Was she taller than uh, Sarah at the time? Yes. Okay. Um, and was her weight normal? What you would expect for a, a teenager? Yeah. Did, well, how much time did you spend with Alyssa um, before you moved out? Uh, before I moved out of the house? Correct. Um, just as much as any two teenagers would. Well, she's a little younger than that. But, I mean, we spent quite a bit of time together as children. And would she talk to you? Mm -hmm. And would she? Yes. yes. <laughs> What's that? Would she confide in you? Yes. Did you know um, about her friends? Yes, most of them. Um, can you remember any of their names? Um, I, yeah, Katie, Charity, Stacy, um, Shay, um, quite a few. Okay. Um, did you ever... Well, at the time, after you moved out, did you still spend time with Alyssa? From time to time. Okay. Um, did the frequency uh, of your visits or interactions decrease because you moved out? Um, yes. All right. Um, however, would she still talk to you and confide in, t uh, confide in uh, to you and things about things? Yeah, for the most part, whatever was going on in, in her life. At some point, did Alyssa move in with you? Um, she stayed uh, with us for a short period of time, yes. And um, when I say in with you, were you living with someone else as well? I was living with my brother, Mike, yes. Okay. And so it gets a little complicated, but uh, defendant uh, my, is a Michael Turney, mm -hmm. and your stepbrother was Michael Seth Turney? Correct. Okay. And so you two were living with each other, and Alyssa moved in? Yes. I wouldn't say moved in, but she was staying with us. All right. And do you recall about how long that was? As much as I can relate, probably about uh, two weeks. So a very short period of time? Right. Um, do you know if prior to moving in with you, she was living with uh, the defendant? Yes. And do you know if she then went back to live with the defendant? Yes.
All right. Um, what? So obviously, this is coming from the perspective of someone who was uh, around 18 or younger at the time. Um, but what was Alyssa like, um, as as you knew her? Um, I don't just my little sister. I mean, she was fun loving. She was a lot like me as a teenager. Okay. So outgoing. Was was she a? Would you can characterize her as a problem child? No, I, she had her struggles, but I, I don't think she was a problem child. All right, fair enough. And so she, you may have not been a perfect angel either. No. Um, a typical teenager. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Did uh, Did you know if she had a job? Uh, at Jack and Box, yes. Did you ever visit her when she was at Jack and the Box? I did not. Don't like Jack in the Box food. I don't eat fast food. Yeah. <laughs> and did you know where she went to school? Yes. Where did she go to school? In Paradise Valley at that time. Okay. And before that, um, as far as high school, where was she going? Um, I, I barely remember going to Barry Goldwater because I went there, but um, that's I, I do remember going there for a year. All right. Did you did you graduate from Barry Goldwater or did you graduate? I did. Now, are you, uh, were you aware if Alyssa had anything like a fake ID? I am not aware of a fake ID if she had one. Uh, were you aware if she used any drugs? I do know about marijuana use. Okay. Um, and that was something you saw? Yes. Do you know about any other type of drugs? How did did you see Sarah and Alyssa interact? Yes, frequently. And how did they interact? Uh, like two teenage siblings. Normal fights, I'm assuming, that two teenage girls would have. Um, from, from your personal observations and what you could see, um, did you believe that Alyssa cared for her sister? Yes, indeed. Were you aware if uh, Alyssa had dated a man by the name of John Lackman? Yes. Okay. Did you ever see Alyssa and John Lackman interacting with each other? I have. Um, what were your observations of John Lackman? Um, I, just a, a typical teenager. I didn't think much of him, but I, it's not for me to decide. <laughs> and I don't think he's here, so um, nothing concerning I, about him. Is that what you would say? I was just yeah, it was a long time ago too. I could be a bit critical as an older brother. Did Alyssa have a cell phone? I I, I don't really remember. Okay. Whether she had on a cell phone or not. And uh, if you needed to get in touch uh, with Alyssa, how'd you do that? It would just be by either calling our father or going over there. Okay. And from the time that you knew her, did you know her to use the internet? No. And um, it can be difficult to even think about a time when there was an internet, but. Uh, that wasn't something that you saw. No, I didn't even use the internet until well after I was an adult. Did were you aware if she had any pets? I think she had a ferret. <laughs> and did she have a ferret at the time she went missing? If you know, I don't remember. <laughs> Are you aware of Alyssa ever breaking her nose when you were with her? I, I don't remember that. All right. Um, 
you said you would visit Alyssa. Um, would you go over to the 17217 residence? I, um, I'm not sure which address that is. I know that it was the two across the street from each other. I, I'm assuming that's the first one. Correct. Yes. Okay. Were, were you personally aware of any video surveillance in that house? Yeah, I, I was made aware long after they that discussion had come up. I was not aware. Okay. So based on the times that you were physically in that house, it wasn't something that you saw or knew about? No. Okay. What about um, uh, a recording device for uh, the telephone? I, if, I, if I saw it, or I, I probably knew about it, but I don't, I vaguely remember anything about it. Okay. Judge, I'm about to go into a whole new area. Okay. This might be a good time. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break a little bit early today. Uh, so have a nice evening. I'll ask you to be back in the jury room by 1030 tomorrow morning. Uh, please remember the admonition. Please take everything with you when you leave the courtroom. And jury's now excused. Sir, you're free to step down. All right. For the jury. Please be seated. You're free to step down. I'm not that worried about it. Let the record show the presence of counsel and the defendant. The jury is not present. Uh, the uh, defense has filed a motion to preclude any further mention of or reference to sexual abuse and molest during the state's case in chief. Uh, the state has filed a response. So uh, in regard to the state's response, I know the state had objected. Was the state anticipating? I, I, I'm not sure what the state anticipates presenting further in its case in chief on the topic of sexual molest. So, Judge, first of all, um, the state is not seeking to there has the state has agreed not to admit certain evidence and those are in prior 404 B uh, uh, motions and those are because we do not have there's personal knowledge and found, uh, foundational issues for those um, however uh, going forward there will be and let, let me talk to my co-counsel for a second I'm going to just because the my co counsel has the witnesses that would deal with that issue. Let's give him the microphone there. There's um, there'll be a, a reference to a, a letter the defendant wrote to CPS uh, expressing his concern that his daughter Alyssa was going to make accusations against him, not specifically child abuse or sexual abuse. Um, and then, specifically, when uh, there's a, a recorded conversation, we have a transcript of it up between the defendant and this last witness, when <laughs> Alyssa was going to stay with him in the summer of 2000, and the defendant is warning uh, that uh, to be careful that, you know, she'll accuse them of sexual abuse, and I can't remember the exact word. And let's see. The contract, of course, but... Um, uh, let me just clarify what you just said. Uh, in the recording, the defendant is, war is warning John that Alyssa would accuse them. Who is them? The, brothers, the two brothers. Okay. 
Go ahead. I think that's the extent of it. Again, I'm sorry, it's, it's not John. She's living. She's going to be staying with with John and Mike, but it's Mike that he's Michael Seth that he's talking to. Okay, we don't have a witness who's going to say. Alyssa told me that she was being molested. Okay, so there's two additional pieces of evidence that the state is going to seek to introduce. One is the letter written by the defendant to CPS with concerns that uh, Alyssa would make some allegations against him that didn't specifically refer to molestation or sexual abuse. Was the defense referring to that item in this motion? No, the, the, and I believe there would be th four things that the state would still, if they're counting that one, be to get into. Obviously, the con contract was ruled by... Well, hold on. Before we get there, let me just clarify the items the state has talked about first. So the first item, the defense is not referring to that in its motion. No. The second item is the recorded conversation between Michael and the defendant, where the defendant warns that Alyssa would be accusing the brothers of molestation. Was the defense referring to that? Nope. So uh, what is the defense referring to if those are the only items that the state intends to uh, elicit in their case in chief? And if that's all they're trying to do, then we're fine. The, the, the issue is they've brought up the 2020 article or the interview. They haven't played that to the jury yet. We also believe that that shouldn't come in. Um, there is conversations with Sarah. Um, they didn't bring those in now. I don't know if they're still playing where she's asking them questions um, about what she learned. And that was our issue is that she's heard this hearsay. She's asking him about it and he's denying it. And so if they're not bringing those in, then we don't have any issue with those. If, if, if they're laying to these specific four things and we'll approach the court before they do something else, and I don't think we have an issue. All right, Mr. Imbordino, as to the two additional matters that Mr. Jackson just referred to, was the state intending on introducing either of those? Well, I didn't ask Ms. Turney about it, so I think, um, no, I didn't ask okay. about it. Uh, this was filed yesterday, that was. Number okay. one. And number two, yeah, I, I, I thought we'd already discussed what I played in my opening statement. So I do intend to introduce the clip where uh, the uh, moderator asked him, you know, did you molest your daughter? And the defendant's responses to that. I, I haven't formally introduced it as an exhibit, but I intend to do so. Okay. All right, so we can sort of cross that bridge when we get to it. But the items raised by uh, Mr. Jackson regarding the 2020 interview. Uh, he is stuck it, to the 2020. The, the clip is from the 2020 interview. Got it. Correct. All right, so before we t before the jury hears any content of that, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely make a ruling on that. I'll direct nobody to mention the contents of it until I make a ruling. But the conversations with Sarah, you've indicated you're not going to go into. So I think the motion is resolved as um, I, and as granted. I, there is another issue because we also brought up, I believe, the podcast, Octavia. I don't know if that's something that they intend. I'm not going to play that. It's a similar conversation. Perfect. All right. Motion resolved. As to the motion for mistrial, I have read the motion and the response. I think these are issues that we've taken up separately. Uh, the defense has put them together in a motion for mistrial. I've read the motion and the response. The motion for mistrial is denied. Counsel, anything else we can talk about before we break for today? Not from the state. Mr. Jackson. What? Not at this time, Your Honor, no. All right, counsel, have a nice evening. We'll see you at 1015 tomorrow. I'm trying to get everybody on tomorrow's calendar to get here early so we don't do this again. Uh, so I'll do my best. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We're at recess.